Conference play begins in the MEAC tonight. The Howard Bison are on the road in Greensboro, North Carolina to battle North Carolina a &T. The Aggies are the MEAC's last unbeaten team, and the Aggie Stadium fans are ready for their conference rival from the nation's capital. It's the MEAC right now. This is ESPNU College Football Primetime presented by McDonald's. Welcome to Aggie Stadium in Greensboro, North Carolina. The conference play begins tonight. It's the MEAC opener between the Howard Bison and the North Carolina a and Aggies. So glad you could join us on this pleasant early fall Thursday evening. I'm Mark Neely along with former all MEAC first teamer as well as NFL quarterback Jay Walker. Jay, you played in this conference for a couple of seasons. What does the conference opener mean? Well, for these programs, it means a lot. Particularly, they're coming off of seven and four seasons a year ago. That's Howard and North Carolina a and Expectations are high. North Carolina A&T's had a fantastic season thus far, but Howard's not impressed by that. Once you get in the conference play, it's like your neighbors. They know you. They don't care what you've done thus far. You have to come out and really beat them. Howard trying to bounce back from a disappointing performance last week to Old Dominion, but their quarterback's playing really well right now, Greg McGee. Greg McGee was highly recruited out of the Pittsburgh area of Pennsylvania. When Greg McGee is on, he's extremely accurate with a lot of velocity on his throws, but I think what people don't recognize, his ability to scramble. He's got a fresh set of legs, and he knows how to use him. Anytime Howard needs a big play, Greg McGee can do it either through the air or running and scrambling on the ground. McGee's certainly a dual threat, but North Carolina a and their quarterback, Lewis Kendall, is as well, Jay, but he seems like he's more comfortable throwing the football now. The good thing for head coach Rob Broadway at North Carolina a and is Lewis Kendall's playing like a senior quarterback. His best football is being displayed this season. His biggest improvement has been in his decision-making in terms of game management. With Lewis Kendall at the helm, North Carolina a and has an opportunity to win each and every football game on their schedule. See the numbers on Kendall. One touchdown, no interceptions, 288 yards. But also could certainly get it done with the legs as well. The senior out of Atlanta, Georgia, and West Lake High School. This is Rayford Petty, who is the interim head coach for Howard University. Really his first year back, a position that he had held previously. And Rod Broadway in his third season with North Carolina a and he's coached a number of teams, Grambling State, NC Central, was a D-line coach in Florida. There's Steve Spurrier, also at Duke, North Carolina, a veteran guy who's really turned this program around. And both of these coaches started off on the defensive side of the football. Ray Petty for Howard was a defensive coordinator for years, and Rod Broadway's forte has been defense, defense, and more defense. So we're set to go. Howard won the toss and will receive. That's Rodney Tyson back deep for Howard. And we are ready to go. North Carolina a and in their gold tops with the blue pants. And Howard in the white uniforms with the navy blue trim. And we are underway from Greensboro, North Carolina. From the 12, Tyson. Cuts it upfield at the 30. A flag comes out. He's tackled at the 32-yard line. And an early look at our referee tonight, Donnell Leathers. Tackled there by Brian Houston. Emily Marker on the field. Marker came out from the field judge at about the 35-yard line just before the tackle was made. Illegal block on the receiving team, number 47, 15 yard penalty, first down. And we call the illegal block on Jordan Bonnet. We had a bunch of flags at Jackson State last Thursday. Let's hope that's not a beginning of a trend here tonight, Jay. <laughs> Off to a great start, a <laughs> tremendous pace in doing that, but that's something that you can't do if you're Howard University. You're on the road. This is North Carolina A&T, one of your conference rivals. Give yourself great field position when you've got a defensive minded coach so often it comes down to the battle of field position and whoever controls and wins the battle of field position is probably going to win this football game well the penalty instead of beginning at the 32 they'll have a first down at their own 17 yard line is greg mcgee the junior out of pittsburgh pennsylvania the tight end david wilson moves to the left side of the formation 
motion comes Brandon Flanagan. Making a handoff. And taken off goes McGee up that left sideline, far sideline, and steps out around the 29-yard line. McGee on the keeper. So a nice run right out of the shoot for Greg McGee. And that's what Greg McGee brings to the table. He can make all of the throws, but the ability to outrun defenders in pursuit makes him a special talent. We'll see these teams both operate out of the no huddle tonight. And the first throw is incomplete at the 32-yard line. The intended receiver was Flanagan. Great decision with McGee where to go with the football. And that's one there where Flanagan just has to make the catch. So it sets up a third and short, third and one. Howard at their own 26 on this, the first possession of the game. Four receivers, two to each side. Hands it off, and we'll see with the pile being pushed. Monte Grant with the tackle for NCAAT. And that is enough for a first down for William Parker, the sophomore running back for Howard. Those are situations, if you're Howard, you don't want to get in the third in obvious run situations. The strength of North Carolina a ts defense is their interior lineman, led by Michael Neal, the D-tackle. Parker again the carry. He's across the 30 to the 32. Now, Tony Klotfelter with the tackle for the Aggies. Aquanius Freeman, who played well in the first game of the year against Eastern Michigan, but then had an ankle injury. Game time decision tonight. Parker is there getting the start, but we'll see if we see Freeman at all in the backfield for Howard tonight. Aaron Christie is the fullback, faking the handoff and taking off is McGee again, stepping out around the 40. Eh, they'll mark him out, pushed out at the 37-yard line by Daniel Penix, the defensive end. Those high snaps have been inaccurate, but you see the ability of Greg McGee to get to the outside and pick up positive yardage when well, the defense did a pretty good job of sniffing out that lead option. So another third down and one. They converted on third and one earlier on this drive. Go to the power and hand off to the freshman running back, Anthony Filia, who is hit for a loss by Devontae Grant, number four of the Aggies, and it's fourth down. Devontae Grant is a linebacker. He's going to shoot the gap and just pummel Philly on the backfield for a loss on the play. And that's a situation where if North Carolina AT is allowed to crowd the line of scrimmage. That's Rod Broadway and defensive coordinator Sam Washington. That's their strength. They're going to make it very difficult for you to run. And you see Devontae Grant with a fantastic tackle in the open field. John Fleck to punt. Devontae Grant back at his own 21 yard line, and it's blocked. Picked up by AT. Tackle made inside the 10 at the six yard line. Michael Weaver. Look at all the bodies around the ball. And just a great job of Weaver going outside. Poor punt protection by Howard University and North Carolina AT with a huge turnover. Weaver with the block. And then there is the recovery scooped up by Tariq Cohen, who's one of their running backs for NCAA and team. The Aggies begin their first possession handed off. That's Dominic Drake, off right tackle, Richard Sr. This is the time right now for your Howard University on defense to come up with a stand right now. You're on the road, the special teams let you down. It would be a huge victory for Howard if they can limit North Carolina A&T to a field goal attempt rather than a touchdown early in the contest. NC a t quarterback Lewis Kendall as they break the huddle. Dominic Drake is the tailback. A couple of fullbacks, one Devin Moore. Play fake, looking to the end zone, wide open, touchdown! That's Devin Moore. Just his second catch of the season, and it results in his first touchdown of the year for the senior from Charlotte. That's a great play call. Getting the fullback out to the flat. The linebackers thought he was going to serve as a lead blocker, and Devin Moore, it wasn't the prettiest catch we've seen, but it was a touchdown <laughs> nevertheless. The Aggies are on the board first. 
Well, the point after tails but goes through up and good for Dominic Frischura. Well, the NCAA team making an early statement. First, the punt block by Weaver, recovered by Cohen, and then the touchdown catch for Devin Moore, and it's 7-0 A&T early. North Carolina, A&T State University. ESPNU College Football Primetime is presented by McDonald's. I'm loving it. And in part by AT&T. Rethink possible. Well, the touchdown catch by Devin Moore has made it 7-0 early. You look at the statue that honors the Greensboro Four, going back to February 1st of 1960. They took seats at the segregated lunch counter of F.W. Woolworths here in Greensboro. Refused service. Sat peacefully until the store closed and became a part of American history. 7-0, NCA and T. Michael Weaver, who had the punt block there in number 28. Cohen, who had the recovery. And NCA and T, Dominic Friscura with the kickoff. Tyson. Makes this one from his own five. Finds a crease. And then a late flag comes in. He's tackled at the 30. Ball came loose, but it was down on contact. We had a flag on the first kickoff return. Rodney Tyson begin the game, and now we have another one. Illegal block in the back. On the return team, number 34. 10 yards from the spot of the foul, first down. James Williams called for the penalty that time. Let's take a look at how Devin Moore was able to get open in the end zone. Take a look at outside linebacker Chase Mitchell here. He's got outside contain. Once Devin Moore fakes the lead, you've got to cover him. You've got to go with him. He gives them a free release into the end zone. Easy throw, not so easy catch, but it's a touchdown for North Carolina a &T. So let's see how Howard responds. Penalty will push him back to beginning at their own 11 yard line with this their second possession of the game. Quarterback Greg McGee under center. And the pitch to Parker. Parker hit in the backfield and dropped for a loss. Number of AT defenders there, including Devontae Grant as well as number 57, Tony Clodfelter. Backed up inside your own 20. Offensive coordinator Ted White has to open up the playbook. Right now, if you're going to try and force the run versus North Carolina AT, they are not going to budge. You must set them up for play action. And here's play action. McGee's throw dropped at the 20 yard line, incomplete, intended for Matt Colvin. That was a good throw by, by Greg McGee. Colvin wasn't expecting the football. Great job, steps up, throws a strike. Colvin doesn't even see the ball coming, and it hits him in the waist. Two drop balls early in this contest for Howard University. They've got to hold on to the football. Hey, you can't throw the football any better than that. Third down and 12. And Howard at their own nine yard line. McGee looking near side. Going deep down the sideline, incomplete at the 43, looking for Stuart Hartman. McGee's pass is incomplete. Devontae Graham on the coverage. Along with number three, Isaiah Martin. Devontae Graham is the best cover defensive back they have for North Carolina A&T. 5'7", 160 pounds, so he's challenged vertically, but they want him to make the big plays that he made a season ago for him. He's an outstanding return man. He's an edge-of-your-seat type of football player where he can make special things happen. Graham is back to receive the punt. Right at midfield. There's the punt out of his own end zone from Fleck. Bounces to the 45 where it's picked up by Graham. Picks up a couple of yards on the return. 46-yard punt for John Fleck with a two-yard return. What's on tap from here? Well... Elvin Bethea, great here at North Carolina a and one of the Hall of Fame greats. I'll tell you more about Elvin and the great class. And Dr. Ronald McNair, who was lost in the Challenger disaster nearly 30 years ago back in 1986, also an NCA&T alum. And Howard's legendary comeback versus NCA&T in 92. I'm not sure who that number seven is right there. Some, some good-looking guy <laughs> with green eyes. I don't know if I'd go there, but... 
And of course, Walker's Weekend Watch. The spotlight is on some great receivers. Gary on first down. Ricky Lewis, a senior out of here in Greensboro and Dudley High School. Ricky Lewis on the carry. You know, one thing you, you like about watching North Carolina a and when you talk to other coaches, they tell you exactly what A&T is going to do. On first down, they're going to run the football. And that's something that uh, uh, all the Aggies have become accustomed to because they want to control the line of scrimmage. That's one thing they want to do is show that we can run the football. When they beat Appalachian State, they had success running on first down. And if you're going to try and limit North Carolina a and you must win the battle on first down. Kendall to throw. He throws a bullet, but under throws the intended receiver at the 31-yard line, at the 30-yard line. Michael Weaver, who had the punt block earlier, was the intended receiver there. Lewis Kendall, 6'1", 205 pounds. He has a pretty release. You know, ball just kind of naturally take flight off his hand. He's got a whip for a right arm. He had a career-high 38 passing attempts in their last game against Elon. North Carolina a t comes in at 2-0. Beat Appalachian State 24-21 on the road, and you beat Elon here 23-10. They were off last week, so they've had a little extra preparation time. For this matchup, fumbled the snap, but the bounce right back to Kendall, but he's still in Fumble. trouble and lost it again. And Howard says they have it. Well, it all began with a little issue with the snap, and then Kendall losing it a second time, and Howard does indeed recover inside NCA and T territory. The pocket presence, he's got the ball too low, not in a ball security position. Great job by the defensive line from Howard Michael Neal able to get a hand on the football for the strip. And this is just something you can't afford to do if you're a quarterback. And the recovery by Howard. So the first turnover of the game committed by the Aggies and a first down for Howard at the 44 of NCA and T. McGee keeping it tackled from behind at the 41 yard line. McGee on the keeper. When you talk to the coaches at Howard, they were excited about the growth of their offensive line. A, a unit that was a weakness now has become a strength, but we are yet to see them control the line of scrimmage and have the ability to run the ball effectively. In motion was Ayagoro. Play fake. Completed at the 39-yard line to the aforementioned Iagoro, who took a big hit at the 35. That's Tony Clodfelter, number 57, making hard contact on Iagoro. Take a listen. A third down, it's short. It looks like that should be enough for the first down after the give to Parker. William Parker on the carry. This North Carolina a t defense, very small, but very tough. McGee keeping, running left. Not much there, maybe a yard or so. North Carolina a t s rushing defense, the first couple of games, which have both been wins for them, have been outstanding. And that's why you're surprised, because they only have two people on the defense that are above 6-1. Everybody else is small, but they're scrappy. I think the name Aggies is appropriate for them. They're scrappy, they'll fight you, and it's very tough to run the football versus them. Hand it off, Parker. Ran into his own blocker, but is able to advance down near the 22-yard line, and again close to a first down. Isaiah Martin and Tyree Hearn bringing him down. But a nice run for Parker of nine yards. And just when we talk about how tough it is to run on North Carolina a t they break their longest run. But that's where you have to run the football versus North Carolina A&T. You must run sideline to sideline, bounce plays to the outside. With Michael Neal and James Morris playing nose tackle for them, can't run up the middle. Good play call by bouncing the run to the outside. Well, they have Christie and Wilson as the fullbacks on third down and short. Philly is the running back. And McGee keeping it. And he's going to throw the football to the end zone to the tight end. Touchdown, David Wilson. 23-yard touchdown catch for the senior, David Wilson. 
David Wilson. Like everybody like myself, Jay was expecting a run or McGee to keep that football, and the tight end Wilson breaks free. It was a great job of just slipping free from the formation. Everybody's expecting the run, but what do they do? They surprise you with the play action and good throw on the run to David Wilson, the senior tight end from Sacramento, California, and Howard with an opportunity to tie this football game with an extra point. John Fleck out of the hold of Richard Iagoro. That is through, and it indeed has Titus at seven. So David Wilson with his fourth catch of the year, his first touchdown of the season, and now the Howard Bison, nine touchdowns scored by eight different players this season. A six-play, 44-yard drive. It began with the A&T turnover, and Howard turns it into points with the touchdown pass to the tight end Wilson, and it's 7-7. Seven -seven. 8.45 to go first quarter from Greensboro, tied at 7 in this MEAC opener. Well, it's a doubleheader in college football at ESPNU Saturday, first at 3.30. It's the All-State Game of the Week as Wake Forest takes on third-ranked Clemson. And then at 7, 20th-ranked Florida with all their injuries taking on Kentucky. Presented by 5-Hour Energy, both games also live on Watch ESPN. And the combination of Boyd to Watkins... That may be a combination that wins Todd Boyd a Heisman this year. I don't know if I can think of a better quarterback wide receiver combination than those guys. I mean, both extremely talented and have productivity on the football field. John Fleck to kick off. Husband Lawrence, Devontae Graham back deep. Tony McRae is well over five, and it's going to be kicked out of bounds by Fleck. First time he's kicked one out of bounds this year, so. 35-yard line is where North Carolina a and will begin. And I understand why they want to try to kick it away from those guys, but not out of bounds. So three special teams penalties already on Howard in this game. And they're fortunate that they've been able to recoup. So it's the A&T begins at the 35. So we've had a touchdown catch for the A&T fullback Devin Moore and for the Howard tight end David Wilson to begin this football game. Probably not the first two candidates I would have had for a touchdown for both teams, but that's where we are early in this game. Lewis Kendall play fake. And the pass is complete and he goes right back to him. Devin Moore to the 35-yard line. Of Howard, that's a long gainer of 30 yards. I, I love the play call by offensive coordinator Ricky Bussell. If they haven't shown the ability to cover the fullback in the flat, go back to it on first down. And once Devin Moore, the fullback, got moving, six feet, 264 pounds, he's a load to bring down. Howard has to figure out how they're going to defend the fullback. Well, by the way, also a three-time scholar athlete. Getting it done in the classroom as well. Getting forward to the 32 for a gain of two. Dominic Drake. Look at the NCAA and T Aggie offensive line and the experience. That, that's a number of starts there. They've really picked it up. That's the strength of this offensive unit. So much experience, and that's why they're able to go on the road and win a game at Appalachian State, which is probably the biggest win in this program in quite some time, at least 10 or 15 years. If you can play in the trenches, you can win football games. Pass through that and caught by Desmond Lawrence down the sideline. Flag is down. He is into the end zone, but the flag's laying back at the 32-yard line. Could be, a, could be a chop block by the wide receiver on the outside. Block him below the waist. On the offense, number 26, 15-yard penalty. You know, I'd receive a Michael Weaver called for that. Yeah, this is what you can't do. He's going to come in and make the block on the bottom of your screen right there. He goes low. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he goes low, but the intent, he was going to hit him low, and it wasn't a good chop block, but he did block him below the waist. And when you're going into the football, you can't make that block outside of the tackle box. So Weaver, who's had a punt block already in this game, now called for the penalty there that takes the six off the board. It keeps it a 7-7 game. And now they're playing behind the sticks at second down and 23. The 
threw his hands off. Tariq Cohen down the sideline, still going. A nice spin move. All the way to the 27 yard line, and he's near a first down. For a gain of 21. They were raving about Tyree Cohen. Small running back, but he's just a true freshman. Great balance, and they say he's got one speed, and that's fast. And Howard University just saw how effective Tyree Cohen could be running the football. Well, from second and 23 to a third, two, and you see the sprinklers there at the bottom of your screen will go a little wider. <laughs> This, this is old school HBCU football here. This is a, a, a page out of the Willie Jeffries playbook. It's just the sprinklers on this side of the field, right along the sideline where NCAA and T is. <laughs> so apparently they're time to come on uh, just a little right around 8 o'clock local time. Did they get the memo that the team was, wasn't going to be practicing and playing on Saturday, that it's going to be a Thursday night football game? You may want to readjust the timer. There they go. It didn't take long. Rod Broadway is like, yeah. He's trying to get my play onto the field really quickly there on third and short. Rayford Petty is like, oh, okay. Yeah. Not top 10 moment here with 7.15 to go in the first quarter. So here's that third down and two call for North Carolina AT. Again, the previous play went for 21 yards. Give him a chance here on third and short at the 27 of Howard. Bindle hands off, first down and more. Tariq Cohen, I can certainly see, Jay, why they like this freshman. He's explosive, and I was watching Cohen during the pregame, and he takes every snap full speed. He's an effort guy, low center of gravity, probably 5'7", 165 pounds, with a solid muscle. And he's got great football speed. Picked up eight yards on third and a long two. First down now for the Aggies. Keeping it. Kendall lunging forward across the 15 down to the 13. Tackled by Cameron Austin. Gain of five there for the quarterback, Lewis Kendall. In college football, and I think you judge quarterbacks by their completion percentage, but also their decision making on read option. Great decision by Lewis Kendall to pull the ball from the stomach of the running back and to pick up five yards on his run. And it looks like a timeout being used here by North Carolina A&T. As a second and a long four from the 14 of Howard coming up. But they use a timeout when we come back. Walker's weekend watch. There's a lot of great receivers out there and a lot of great games to keep an eye on. Jay will fill you in. MTSU versus BYU tomorrow at 9 on ESPNU. He's got an opportunity to become only the third player in the history of college football to have three consecutive 200-yard games. Did you know that? I did not, and I was stunned by how many receiving yards Richardson already has this season. Second out at five for A&T. Wendell's throw, a completion to the seven-yard line there, caught by Darren Bullock. 417 yards for Richardson. And we know Lee's good, we know Watkins good, but Paul Richardson's done that in just two games. 417 yards, four touchdowns. He's taking on Fresno State. He's gonna have to work if he wants to break that record, but I think little Peebo can get it done. First day goal for A&T. Clock running, six minutes to play in the first quarter with this game tied at seven. Lost the football, is able to jump back on top of it. a and turned it over on their last possession and nearly did so again there. Poor exchange between the quarterback and the center, and Kendall separated his hands. And as a quarterback, if you allow your hands to separate, the ball's going to go through. They were fortunate to recover the fumble. So no opportunity to... Wow, what late substitutions, mass substitutions for Howard. Five new defenders came in. A&T already at the line of scrimmage. Look to the sideline by Lewis Kendall. Play yeah, clock is at two. Playoff. They're going to have to use another timeout. So they use their second timeout already. Timeout. And we haven't even played ten minutes yet in this football game.
Look at Broad Broadway. I know one of the things he wants to do is figure out how they're fumbling that football. Take a look here. You, you see the quarterback right here. Watch if there's any separation in his hands. And once the ball snaps, you see that separation? Ball's going to end up on the ground. Right through as a quarterback, it's imperative that you keep your two hands together at all times or else plays like that are going to happen. And they were fortunate to retain possession. So the snap from center Ronald Candy, who, by the way, is the preseason all back second team this year. It's a good snap. But Kendall nearly lost at A&T. Their last 3-0 start, you have to go back to 2001. And if you take the A&T program since 2001, I mean, this program went through some dark days in the middle of the last decade. And, and it was painful to watch. Being a fan of HBCU football, this was one of the proudest programs in all of black college football. The decade they had where they really had some down years was surprising after Bill Hayes left. But now Rob Broadway seems to have the pride back in what they call Aggie pride down here. High expectations, good football team. Kendall keeping it and into the end zone. Lewis Kendall, his first rushing touchdown of the season, puts NCAA and T back in front. Great decision. And so much is about decision making by the quarterback. When to hand the ball off, when to keep it. Lewis Kendall showing leadership on the football field with his decision making in the Aggies running game. Eight yard touchdown run. For Kendall. Here's the point after attempt at Tails and is no good. So that is missed. It keeps it a 13 7 game. There's the touchdown run for Kendall. Just recognition on the in man of the line of scrimmage. If he goes with the running back, you pull the ball out of his stomach. Damon Gresham Chesham, who's the best lineman for Howard University. Trying to make a play in the backfield. Lost outside contained. Lewis Kendall goes in for the easy touchdown run. And the missed point after Dominic Frescura has been their place kicker, but Jose Garcia Camacho is the one who missed the extra point there. They had a 27-game losing streak A&T did between 2005 and 2008, obviously before Rod Broadway. And since Broadway... Right now, I have a six-game winning streak. Of course, that dates back to last season as well as their two wins this year. And what's impressive about that 14-10 and 10 record under Rob Broadway, he was able to do this in spite of the violations that occurred before he got here, their APR violations. So they've not had spring football in Greensboro in two years. This is a team that won seven games without spring football. They're undefeated this year. And next year, they will finally get up to their full scholarship allotment. When he first took over the program, they had 29 players, not 29 scholarships, 29 wow. players on scholarship. Now they'll be back to a full hand, and folks better look out. The Aggie pride seems like they're going to be around for a while. It's taken around the 20 by one of the upmen, Avery and Resby. Special teams haven't been going all that well for Howard so far tonight. Three penalties and a punt block, but... That return across the 30 up near the 35 and no flags that time. Is being on the return. It is up across the 30 to the 35 yard line. And here come the Howard Bison. The quarterback Greg McGee. Last year five TDs five interceptions but had six rushing touchdowns. The Bison will have it there, first and 10. Week two this year he was the MEAC offensive player of the week. And it went over Morehouse. He was 21 for 27 242 yards three TDs and and about 54 rushing yards of his own as well. Under pressure. Going deep, wide open, but just a little too long for Richard Iagoro, who had a step or two on the defender. And Howard misses a chance for six there. Wow, everything was there except for the throw. I mean, great protection, great route. Got behind the secondary just a little bit too far for the wide receiver. Travis Crosby and Isaiah Martin were beaten deep there, but unfortunately that was just overthrown by McGee. Puts it into the belly of the back this time. And Billy off for two. It's Dominic Filio, who's a freshman out of Los Angeles. Back in your old home area, Jay. He went to 
Redondo Union High School. And they love him. They raved about him. They think he's going to be probably one of the best running backs in the history of Howard University when it's all said and done now. Harvey Reed's always going to be the legend at Howard in terms of running back. But they think Phil Y'all is that talented that he could be one of the best to come through the campus. Third down and eight. Howard from their 37. Here comes the pressure. He gets rid of it in time and incomplete. Looking for Rodney Tyson around midfield. It's number 21, Devontae Graham on the coverage. Graham, a two time All BAC first teamer. Yeah, that was Graham on the coverage, but great job by Isaiah Martin, number three. You're going to see him there. Watch him buzz underneath this route. He's going underneath it, gets a hand on it. Tip ball, incomplete pass. Great recognition by the junior from Roanoke, Virginia. Second three and out for Howard now tonight. John Fleck on to punt for the Bison. Gets this one away after having one blocked earlier in the fair catch called for, even though he had a defender right there in his grill, Devontae Graham. 43 yard punt for John Fleck, who's been averaging a 43 yard punt so far this year. The Saturday menu here on ESPNU battled the Sunshine State, Miami, and South Florida, and then at 3.30 Eastern, Wake Forest, and number three. Yes, Alabama's number one. They deserve to be number one. But I say quack quack. They're, they're pretty good. Kendall's throw to the 40 yard line. A completed pass right into the arms of Desmond Lawrence Jr. out of Durham, North Carolina. This Seven is a big time throw. Watch Lewis Kendall's shoulders. He's got to turn at the last moment just to get enough torque to get the ball there and throws it on the money. That's a big time throw by Lewis Kendall. First down. Nice catch. Lawrence got the right foot down. Lawrence 16th catch of the season. That leads all the receivers for A&T. Lawrence came in averaging 95 yards receiving per game also to lead the team. Picked up 18. First down from their own 39. Kendall's throw right back to Lawrence. Flag comes out late. After he was brought down there at the 41 yard line. Let's see if he got the face mask of Lawrence here at the end. Does, does Lawrence's knee go down? Close, but no. He no, he was oh, up. Wow, yeah. he really ripped the face mask off. This is Jordan Monette, number 47. And watching North Carolina AT, I've seen the evolution. I mean, this was a team that offensively never really excited anybody. But when I talk to Coach Broadway, he says, Jay, you're going to like what we bring to the table tomorrow night. You know, we've opened it up. I've got an offensive coordinator who I completely trust in Ricky Bustle. They coached together 30 years ago at East Carolina. Ricky Bustle also spent time at UL Lafayette as the head coach. Had a steam for Ricky Lewis. Ushered out of bounds at the 40 yard line of Howard. By Cameron Alston. Ricky Bustle, the offensive coordinator, who sits up in the press box for the Aggies. And anytime you can have an offensive coordinator that has head coaching experience, it's a plus. And they've got a good one here in Greensboro. A little over three minutes to play here in the first quarter. a t has the six-point lead. Marching here with the ball at the 40 of Howard. Kendall hands it off to Ricky Lewis. Goes for two yards for the senior Lewis. Kareem Brown, the middle linebacker, with the stop for the Bison. Give credit to the defensive line for Howard University. A&T wants to control the line of scrimmage, but they have not budged much. It's been very tough to get yards early in this contest running the football. Third down and five. Dominic Drake is the back. And in the shotgun. Kendall. Kendall throws it. Too deep and incomplete at the 15. The intended receiver was Michael Weaver. That one was out of sync somewhere, Jay. 
miscommunication. And that's unfortunate because it was great protection by the offensive line. Howard brought a blitz, but the blitz was not able to get there. Kendall misfires on the play where, at the very least, he should have been able to run and pick up five yards to keep the football. Dominic Frescura to punt. This is the first punt of the game for A&T. Frescura, who's a freshman from South Pasadena, California, will try to pin him in. Just gets that wobbly punt away, and it bounces back across the 10 and is down to around the 12. Ball is down to the Bison 12 by Howard Mahavid. Well, who was the quarterback after Jay Walker left Howard? The answer is Ted White, who's now the offensive coordinator for Howard. And the all-time BI passing leader. Your, your records, unfortunately, didn't stand for long there, Jay. I mean, records are meant to be broken, and uh, <laughs> Ted White is a good one. I mean, he's one of the best passers in the history of FCS football and doing a fantastic job now as the offensive coordinator. And he's done a great job in mentoring and, and, and teaching Greg McGee. And Greg McGee, he feels, is probably the best quarterback in black college football. Well, this is junior campaign. He's got an opportunity to showcase his talents tonight. Straight ahead. Fullback Darren Christie with a rare carry. And only one carry coming in this year for a minus three yards. Tackled by Tyree Hearn. You know, Ted White, he had a game in 98 against Florida AM. Eight Eight touchdowns, 561 yards passing. Well, he, he was special. He shattered it with Coach Wilson. The passing game evolved. And there's a reason why he holds so many records. McGee doesn't see the defender and is brought down for a loss back at the five. That's Daniel Pinnix. Number 93, a sophomore. The best pass rusher for this Aggie defense. He's, he's just going to beat his man. McGee's going to flush out of the pocket, and Penix has full momentum, able to catch McGee from behind for the sack. Fourth sack for Penix this year. That leads a t and also leads them with now five and a half tackles for loss. And third and long, third and 16 for the Bison, right near his own goal line. McGee in trouble again. Gets out of it with a completed pass to the 10-yard line and is advanced what a play. by Parker all the way up near the 30. That's the first down. <laughs> Gain at 20. How did he pull this off? Strong legs. We talked about it. The youthful and strong legs. McGee doesn't go down and has enough presence to just make a flip out to Parker. Parker goes north-south and picks up a huge first down for Howard. That was Tyree Hearn who was wrapped around the legs of Greg McGee as he was making that pass, which he completed to move the sticks. Just over a half minute to go in this first quarter. Filiaw spins away from one tackler. What an impressive run, still going! All the way up near the 44 yard line. 17 grinding yards for the true freshman from LA. Well, this is what they're talking about. Maybe he's as good as advertised. They say he's a special talent. And watch him bounce off of would be tacklers. Keep the legs going. Move the pile. Anthony feel you. I like what I'm seeing. That's the run of the night so far as we about to conclude this first quarter. Let's see if they get another playoff here. And he jumped. James Morris, the nose tackle. I don't know if he was drawn off sides, but he bumped the uh, center, Joshua Matthews. That does go against the Aggies. So it'll be first and five. And I know this has to be driving Coach Broadway crazy. You have a team third and 16 inside their own five-yard line. You allow them to get the first down, and now you have a penalty on top of that. And now Howard's up near midfield. Their own 48. What looks to be the final play of the quarter, and they give it back to Philly off. He's near another first down as we hit zeros to end the first quarter. Been a fun first quarter. They had the punt block, which turned into points for a &T, and also a nice touchdown catch for Devin Moore, their fullback. And a turnover turned into points on the catch by the tight end, Wilson. We're headed to the second in Greensboro. Saturday on...
Welcome back to ESPNU College Football Prime Time presented by McDonald's. We're ready to begin the second quarter, 13-7 A&T, leading Howard. These teams played 20 years ago on this very field. Uh-oh. The number seven quarterback for Howard was none other than Jay Walker, who on this play in overtime. Look at 20, <laughs> 25 yard touchdown run. I want to say you were basically untouched. That was in OT, 41-35. Howard was the final. It was a big year for the Bison. You know, I'll give you a little hint. You can't show that footage too much around here in North Carolina. How about that card, though? That's a svelte jaywalk. You look at the back of the card. Showing your days at Howard and drafted by the Patriots in the NFL. Once upon a time. That's the way a lot of good stories begin. <laughs> second down and one for Howard. At the 48-yard line of a t as we begin the second quarter. That's Hartman in motion to the left. Handed off to Parker. Goes straight ahead and should have enough for the first down up near the 45-yard line. Well, what do you remember about that? I'm going to mention the 93 season. That was a big year for Howard. Yeah. Undefeated. I think uh, it was a big game for both programs. A&T was ranked number five in all of one AA football at the time. And Howard, we had just cracked the top 25 for the first time in school history. Coach Petty was a defensive coordinator back then. I've seen so many people throughout the years have told me I was out that game. I said, you couldn't have been. The stadium only holds 25,000. I've met at least, seems like 50,000 people that told me they were at that game and it was a memorable contest. There's the pass by McGee going deep and incomplete at the 11-yard line. In the vicinity was Jonathan Booker as well as Richard Iagoro. Well, of course, since then, you've been doing a lot of things with ESPN. Do you remember your first ESPN broadcast assignment? Woo, my first. It was in Orangeburg. This is actually for BET, <laughs> but it was your first broadcast assignment at South Carolina State. Wow. <laughs> And now, now I'm here with you. Now you're stuck with me. <laughs> and happy to be. <laughs> Sorry they did that to you, Mark. Here's the carry. Have you ever heard? Phil Yaw. Prior to coming here, have you ever heard of the Aggie Pride? Uh, for different it's schools, Aggie Pride, but not coming. necessarily NCA and T they, Aggie Pride, but now I've been schooled in it. They wear that banner better than anybody else I've seen in the country. I mean, if you talk to anybody from A&T, you tell them Aggie Pride. And they're going to say Aggie Pride as well. Third down to nine. Four receivers, three to the right for McGee. Booker is the receiver wide to the left at the bottom of your screen. And looking right, there's the pass completed to Hartman. Forward progress was right up near the 35, which they'll give to him and a first down. Good throw by Greg McGee. Really stepped into that McGee's throw. And you can tell he's got a tight spiral. He can really zip it. The ball gets there in a hurry. Once he recognizes, and you can see why he's one of the premier quarterbacks in all of FCS football. At game 10, it's a first down from the 35 of a &T. and Oh, how about Parker dropped it? They were trying to act like there was confusion with McGee, and then it really did turn confusing when Parker mishandled the snap. Wow. Well, what do you call this play? The okie doke. <laughs> he's trying to walk to the sideline, act like he's not hearing anything, puts his arms up. Parker doesn't catch it and actually would have had a lead blocker in front of him. Now, obviously, that was part of the play for McGee. That was designed. He, yeah. he wasn't really confused that way. And now he's going back to the air at a little high for Hartman around the 25-yard line. And that's why you have to be careful when you call those type of trick plays. You want to scout them out, but in that situation, you just picked up a first down. You're driving the ball on this defense. You're wearing them down. I don't think that calls for trickeration during that point. You just go with what you've been doing to move the football. Third down at 13. Three receivers, two to the left. They have Hartman wide to the right. McGee throws across the middle and intercepted. It caromed off of Booker and is picked off by a &T. That's Devontae Graham on the return. He steps out across the 40-yard line. So the pick for Graham and a 24-yard return for the all Miak first-teamer. Yeah, th this was a great throw. This is the ball that Jonathan Booker has to catch. Coming across in the perfect spot, deflection, but great reaction. 
Like Graham and watch him pick up the block set him up as a lead blocker. He's their punt returner so you know he knows how to make folks miss. And that's a big time throw hit him in stride on the crossing pad that's what you want but good job by Devontae Graham setting up the punt at that point it becomes like a punt return but it was just an interception return. Graham had a team I four interceptions last year there's his first of the 2013 season. So each team's now turned it over one time, and maybe it will be a second time for A&T, but, boy, I, I'll tell you what, Kendall is having some issues with the snap, and, and it doesn't look like Canty, the center, is the cause of these issues. We, we highlighted the exchange earlier, and as long as he continues to not keep those hands together, things like that will happen. Now, in this case, sometimes it could be the center raises his butt a little bit, and your hands tend to separate. But if you're really struggling that much, just interlock your thumbs, and that way you can ensure that your hands will stay together. Lanty nearly turned it right back over. Lose one on the recovery. Kendall, he's going deep and underthrown at the 15-yard line. A late adjustment, and now a flag comes out. Simmons on the coverage of Desmond Lawrence. Hardest ball to defend is the underthrown pass on the outside. Defense, number 21, 15 yards from the previous spot. First down. And Lawrence made a really late adjustment, didn't he, Jay, he did, on this ball? He saw the ball late, but he does try to come back and right there. Oh, wrapping his arms around him. Curtis help. Simmons wrapped his arms around him. Easy call for the official to make. We're going to buy 44. So the fifth Howard penalty for 85 yards so far in this first half. Again, three of those penalties came on special teams. So it's a first down now for A&T at the 44-yard line of Howard. A&T with the six-point lead here early in the second quarter. Or the fullback into that tailback spot, fake the handoff to him. Kendall being chased by Sheets, and he's out of bounds, not too far from the line of scrimmage. Kendall on the keeper. Give him a yard. And this is a decision making that they are impressed with with Lewis Kendall. Leaves the pocket, doesn't see anything, rather than force it, throw an ill-conceived pass. Okay, just run, pick up a yard, but you maintain possession of the football. That's playing quarterback and doing the right thing, protecting the football. See Kendall pointing to his wristband there for the play. Now, second down and nine. Kendall option pitches it. Dominic Drake on the sideline to the 31 yard line for a first down. Redshirt senior Dominic Drake. It'll be another first down run. And Drake's a good one. He won the starting running back position a season ago. Beat out a guy by the name of Mark Mayhew, who was a legend down here. Mike Mayhew was yep. a legend down here and. Now you had to work to get his job back. So Drake's a guy that has talent. And right now this running back core with Greg, Drake and Cohen and Lewis, they can get the job done. Well, Mike Mayhew is the leading rusher all time leading rusher in A&T history. Right back to him, but hit is Drake. Drop for no gain. Dominic Drake on the carry. No gain in the play. Four carries tonight now for Drake for 17 yards. Came in averaging 89 yards rushing per game to lead AT rushers. Second down and 10 on the Howard 30. Warren Kendall with touchdowns for AT. Titan Wilson has a TD for Howard in this game. Kendall gets a nice block and is able to step out near the 25-yard line. 
able to come back was Michael Weaver, the, Bison, the, Bison, the, the wide receiver that helped him get those last five yards. The Bison decides to dial up pressure. They bring a blitz from the inside. Devin Rollins, the middle linebacker, comes on the blitz with Kendall with enough mobility to escape and get outside of the pocket to pick up a couple yards on the scramble. 14 rushes now for Kendall. They brought the blitz on the previous play. I wouldn't be surprised if they brought the pressure again. Take a look at the two interior linebackers. They're giving a look like they want to come and shoot the gap again. Here they come, and Lewis, Kendall able to make it back to the line of scrimmage. Cameron Alston came through there and nearly got him initially, but it is. A loss of six. And I like the call by the defensive coordinator, Bobby Jones. He recognized on the previous play, they didn't pick up the blitz protection. It was just that Lewis Kendall outran the protection. Well, this time, he brings two linebackers up the same gap, able to get some pressure to Brian Resby. Nowhere to go for Lewis Kimball. Kendall, and a big play for the Howard Bison defense. With the ball at the 30 on fourth down and 10, they go for it. They're one for three on fourth downs this season. Instead of attempting a long field goal, which would be close to 50 yards or punting, they go forward on fourth and 10 and take a shot towards the end zone, and it pays off. Caught inside the five by Desmond Lawrence. Kenneth Russ with the coverage brought it down, but a gain of 27 on fourth and 10. They found the matchup when they had Desmond Lawrence on the freshman Kenneth Russ. Perfectly thrown ball on the corner route. Man-to-man -man coverage. You have a freshman cornerback in the game. They clearly picked on him and were able to convert the fourth down. First and goal, a and Dominic Drake is the back. A couple of fullbacks in there, including one in motion. That being McMinn. Straight ahead for Drake. And that, that conversion on fourth down it took a lot of Howard University Bison defense. I mean, they had made some plays and had them on the ropes, and to give up that big play to keep the drive alive for North Carolina A&T so often emotionally, teams can't recover. Once again, they sit Anthony McMinn in motion, pitch it. Here comes Drake, trying to turn the corner towards the pylon. Lost the football at the end. No call. So he's out around the one. Well, this is going to be close. Good job of getting to the outside. Ah, yeah, that, the knee was down. That, the knee was down. Where was the ball? So I don't think there's anything that's going to change the spot of the football. Number 40, Devin Rollins, here pursuing him. And that was a great pursuit by the middle linebacker Devin Rollins really stretching that play forcing Drake to bounce to the outside and keep him out of the end zone. Third and goal from the one. With man in motion again. Tumbling into the end zone with a dive. Dominic Drake with a second rushing touchdown of the season. Well, they convert it on fourth and ten and turn it into six. Right here, just leap, get airborne, easily into the end zone for the touchdown for the Aggies. Jose Garcia Camacho on for the point after he missed the last one. And this one is straight through. And it all began with a pick. All that went off the hands. And the intended receiver, Booker, right into the arms. Devontae Graham he turned into a 10-play drive, eight of 58 yards. They converted a fourth and 10, and now lead 27. From Greensboro tonight, college football primetime presented by McDonald's. NCAA and T leading Howard 20 to 7. Blue and gold marching machine. The Aggie fans pumped up. They have the 13-point lead. This is a team, Jay. They came into this game having been into the red zone eight times and only scored two touchdowns. Tonight, they've been in the red zone three times and have scored three touchdowns. 
effective. They're getting better as the season goes on, which is a scary thought for the rest of the MEAC football teams. Coach Broadway told us uh, Anthony Anthony Lee Lee said, hey, we, that's one of the things we worked on during the off week last week, being better in the red zone. It's paid off so far tonight. Three off from the 12. Big hit at the 30. A flag is out. A well, drop balls have been an issue tonight for Howard Jones. You can have the best quarterback in the world, but if your wide receivers don't hold on to the football, then you're going to have an ineffective offense. Greg McGee's throwing balls right on the money, and it caught up to him with the drop ball there by Booker, which led to the interception, and a good team is going to make it pay. North Carolina made him pay. On the return team, doing the return, number 52, 10 yards from the spot of the foul. First down. Eric Pittman called for the penalty. The penalty and not only has it been dropped, Passes that have been an issue for Howard, but penalties on special teams, and there's another one of them right there. That's their fourth. Yeah, the special teams have let them down. They had a punt blocked, and every time they've had a kickoff or a return, they've had a penalty down. And in a game like this, where that field position is so important, they've got to do a better job on penalties. McGee, of four of 12 as a result of some of those drops for 62 yards so far with one TD, and the one interception really was not his fault when Booker had a pass right in his hands deflect into the arms of Grant. Carry straight forward up near the 20. You know what's interesting about this game right now? You know, you're down by 13 on the road, but the beauty of having a quarterback is you're never out of it. You know, you can decide to open up the offense and say, you know what, we're going to throw the football 50 times tonight. And McGee is enough of a talent where he can hurt you. And I think this is that point in the game where you open up the playbook and say, Greg McGee, I need you to make some plays. Pulls it out of the belly of Parker and runs it himself, trying to make a play. And hits the 25 before he's thrown back. And McGee on the keeper. But again, forward progress will put him up to the 25. 25. It's going to set up a third and about three. Devontae Grant and Travis Crosby eventually pushing him backwards. Third and two. So third and a long two. Now we're trying to avoid a three and out here. Just over six minutes to play in the first half. McGee immediately looking right, throws that direction, and finds his receiver, Matt Colvin, for a first down to the 35, a gain of nine. Matthew Colvin. Good job on the underneath route, going through your progressions, and you see Colvin, he's a fourth choice on this one. He's going to come across your screen there, nothing open down the field. Colvin's there in the soft spot of the zone coverage to pick up the first down for the Bison. Play fake again, and McGee throws and fires a bullet. Did he hang on at the 45-yard line? He did a completed pass to Jimmy Johnson, McGee's the tight end. He caught it twice. <laughs> he caught it twice. McGee's going to throw the ball, and the contact is going to be made. Ball comes loose, but he goes down on the ground, and he catches it again. That's good concentration by Jimmy Johnson. And if you're a Howard fan, yes, Jimmy Johnson, son of former Howard tight end and legend Jimmy Johnson is currently a coach for the Minnesota Vikings in the NFL. Hold down at the 42 yard line. Philly off. Hit in the backfield and it's going to be third down. I understand you want to run the football but I really believe Greg McGee's your best football player. Making good decisions. Throw the football. Put it in his hands as often as you can. 32, Booker's the receiver wide to the left, two receivers to the right, wide right, Stuart Hartman. Put it in the hands of the best. Ooh, well, he got right near where he lined to make at the 45, <laughs> McGee, and then Ayodeji Olatoye. Well, a hard tackle on the quarterback. And you know, if you've got a quarterback that's going to run, he becomes a running back. You don't tackle him like a quarterback. Lower the shoulder, put the boom on him. You got to be careful if you're Howard on how you're going to run your quarterback against a team that's very aggressive on defense. Now with the spot, he ended up for the first down. The first down, Bison from the 46 and draw. Fill y'all with a nice run of about 10 yards up near the 45 of A and T. Gains nine. Grant and Crosby with the tackle. North Carolina A&T 
they play what you call high quality FCS football. They're going to give up the little things in front of you, but once you start to cross that 35, 40 yard line, then they're going to get fancy with their coverage. Right now, they're very vanilla, just trying to beat you in the trenches. Loss of football. AT has it. Tyree Hurts took it right away. McGee, it looked like he had recovered the fumble, but Hearn pulled it away. A flag out late over by the AT sideline. That looks like Howard's second turnover of the night. Let's get the call, though. First from our referee, Donnell Leathers. Dead ball. Unsportsmanlike. Of the defense, of the offense, number six. 15-yard penalty. First down, Aggies. Jonathan Booker, wide receiver for Howard's, called for the personal foul after the play had ended. So that's going to add and on here for a and T. Going to spot that up at the 38-yard line of Howard. So each team has now turned it over twice. We'll take a timeout. 3:46 to go till halftime. Aggies have the ball in the 27 lead. Every generation gets serious. ESPNU College Football Primetime. Brought to you by Lee. Introducing the new Lee Modern Series for men. And Tostitos. Where there's Tostitos, there's a party. That's the NCAA and T State University galleries. They're comprised of two collections, the H.C. Taylor Art Collection and the Maddie Reed African Heritage Collection. Established in 1956, the galleries feature art that emphasizes cultures and people from around the world right here in Greensboro on the A&T campus. 346 to go until halftime. 20 to 7 A&T after the turnover. We begin at the 38-yard line of Howard. We correct there. Howard again has two turnovers after that last one. The punt block is not a turnover, so just one official turnover for NC A&T in this game. Hand it off, Iagoro reverses, runs left, 30, 25, 20, down the sideline and tumbles to the end zone. Did he get in? Yes. 38-yard run. Desmond Lawrence, the fastest person on the football field. He's an all-conference sprinter for the track team, and when he turns on the Jets, it's a foot race. You're not going to catch him. Great play call. Utilizing the speed at the wide receiver position on the reverse. North Carolina AT playing one whale of a first half. And Desmond Lawrence is a transfer from East Carolina University. He was a track yes, athlete there as well. PAT good, but the late flag out. Desmond Lawrence, that 38 yard run. Seven. For the moment, has made it 27-7. And now Leathers, our referee, with the call. There is no foul on the play for leaping. There is no foul on the play for leaping. So they pick up the flag, and we'll go to break with 3.36 left till halftime. Desmond Lawrence took the handoff from Ricky Lewis. He goes 38 yards, and it's a 20-point lead for NC A&T. MTSU. It's the conference opener in the MEAC between Howard and North Carolina A&T, and it's the Aggies up by 20. Just over three and a half minutes left till halftime. On a pleasant night here in Greensboro, North Carolina. A&T has taken advantage of a couple of Howard turnovers. Let's see how Howard responds. Now down 20, just over three and a half minutes left till halftime. Jose Garcia Camacho, short kick goes out of bounds right at the 35, which is where they're going to begin anyway with the kick out of bounds. Well, you noticed on this touchdown run, 
that a 300-pounder got down the field and made a nice block 15 yards from the line of scrimmage. Desmond Lawrence got the touchdown, but watch the big left tackle, Willie Ray Robinson. He's going to give you misdirection this way, then get back out and become the lead blocker. Look at the mobility. And then once he gets there, that's tough enough as it is for a guy that big to get there. But watch this. Set him up, size him up. Defensive back wants to take him on. Come on, Curtis Simmons. Bring it on. And watch what happens to Simmons. Uh, mistake. Touchdown for North Carolina A&T, but great job by Willie Ray Robinson, the third. Get it done. First team all MEAC last year. September 16th of this year was named the MEAC Offensive Lineman of the Week. After there. Win over Elon. Last two possessions for Howard have both resulted in turnovers. Run here for Parker up near the 45 for a gain of five. And Howard needs to do something. This place became very uncomfortable. It became a hostile environment right now, and Howard needs to respond in, in ball security. I mean, you see the miscues right there, what they've done. It's been a sloppy first half of play for Howard University. They must turn it around in a hurry if they're going to have any chance of coming back in this football game. He get, McKee gives it to Parker, who has a first down across midfield to the 49 of AT. And plenty of time in all three of their timeouts here. Three minutes to go. He is across the 50 to the AT 49. McGee immediately hit after the catch at the 45. Zayagoro. Well, it's another addition to college football primetime Friday night when the Blue Raiders take on the Cougars. ESPNU college football primetime. Middle Tennessee versus BYU Friday at 9 on ESPNU and also live on Watch ESPN. Second and six. Another first down across the 40 to the 39 yard line. Pass, pass completion to Brendan Flanagan, his first catch of the night. This is where you have to finish off a drive. Howard University has been here before tonight, and then they've turned the ball over. Now you must finish off the drive once you get to your opponent's territory. McGee steps up, eludes a couple of tacklers, but not the finishing tackle by Marcus Alberts at the 38 yard line. Great open field tackle by Albert. Albert's going to see him in space and get him low, wrap him up. Textbook tackle. Albert's a true freshman out of College Park, Maryland. Filia. He's in the contact there at the 37 and brought down. Marcus Albert once again there on the tackle number 18. Fundamentally sound. The defense from North Carolina A&T keep everything in front of you. Come up and make good open field tackles and keep the pressure on Howard University to convert third downs. And a third and eight from the 36 yard line. Move the tight end. Wilson to the left side of the formation. McGee. First down catch at the 25 yard line to Hartman. Well, the toy pushed him out. That's eight completions, six different receivers for Howard in this game. Ball distribution, Coach Petty, that's a good sign. Your quarterback's playing pretty well. He's throwing the ball, and if the receivers can hold on, they can get back in this football game. And the first down at the 25 of ANT. Clock running. Clock stopped with 108. Now it starts to run on the snap, and McGee towards the sideline is going to step out near the 20. Mark about at the 19 yard line. Defensive tackle Michael Neal there to usher him out. Important drive here, Jay, for Howard. Any points on the board that you can add going into the locker room would be a tremendous plus for Howard University. The key is a t they'll give you the stuff in front. They're, they're going to make it extremely hard for you to cross that goal line. Tyson goes in motion to the right. McGee looked right, throws left, screen pass. Ayagoro to the 17. And they have all three timeouts. 
So under a minute to go. Under a minute to go. This is third and two. Third and two. Handoff. Parker. First down. Well, I think he got there with forward progress up to the 14. He should have the first down. Parker on the carry. Takes the ball inside the 15. Up to the 14. So it'll be a first down from the 14. And they're going to use their first time out. So we'll step aside as well with 34 seconds left in the first half. With McCaffrey. And on Georgia Tech. And he thanks very much. Yeah, no break for Jay at halftime. We'll keep him busy. <laughs> Well, this is the 11th play of the drive for Howard that began at their own 40. And they have a first down at the 14 of NCA and T. McGee towards the end zone oh, off wow. the hands of the tight end Wilson, who McGee had a touchdown a catch earlier in the game for Howard score and had a great chance there. And this is when you have to make this catch. You're on the road, things aren't there. Was it a perfect pass? No, but was it a catchable ball? That's in the breadbasket. That's got to be a touchdown grab there. Help out your quarterback. And that has Rafe Petty shaking his head. Wilson had a 24 yard touchdown catch. And Howard scored, which at that point tied the game. McGee, Hartman, tackled at the nine. Now they have two timeouts left. 24 seconds left. Howard will use their second. Third catch for Stuart Hartman. Good look there, Ray Petty, the interim head coach right now. And how often do you see somebody get an opportunity to be a, the head coach a second time at one university? And talk to him, and he said, I'll be better this time around. And you can tell the team is really playing for him. <laughs> but that's just a look that can't understand what's going on with this football team. Can't hold on to the football. Got him in a hole right now. Well, the nation's longest winning streak is at stake on ABC Saturday Night Football as sophomore sensation Melvin Gordon leads the Badgers bruising ground attack against Urban Meyer's undefeated Buckeyes. Saturday Night Football presented by Windows. In the, in the same breath with the Oregons or the Alabamas. They, they've got to prove. They need to play with a chip on their shoulder the whole season. Make us believers. Third down at five from the nine. McGee steps up. Incomplete going for Igoro as he had a defender Tyree Hearn, number 49, wrapped around him again. That's the pressure, and this time able to grab him and not allow McGee. Well, fourth and five, Jay. Would you, you take three? I'll take points. I, I think you need to get points. If you can make it a 17 point game, that's two touchdowns and a field goal to tie. Here's John Fleck to attempt a 26 yard attempt off the right hash. And Claire comes in late for Howard and <laughs> just apparently 10 <laughs> men on the field for the most part knock it through and do take the three with 15 seconds left in the half. John Fleck, the BAC place kicker of the week. After their win over Morehouse, which was on September 7th, he a couple of field goals and three PATs in that game. And he's now six for six in field goal attempts this year. They are getting ready for the halftime show, the Blue and Gold Marching Machine. In the direction of band director Donna, uh, Dr. Kenneth Ruff. They're a good one. And you know who else is here? The Showtime Marching Band is here. Surprised me when I saw the Howard University band make the trip down from D.C. for Thursday night football. Tremendous football environment here in Greensboro doing a great job on Thursday night. And they made the announcement of different watch parties taking place throughout the whole state. And I know they've got watch parties in D.C. and in Virginia everywhere. So these two schools, it, it's a respected rivalry, but we're also friends. Band director John Newsom has brought the Showtime Marching Band and Showdown as Jay was alluding to from the nation's capital. 
15 seconds left in this first half. Again, Sports interview halftime report coming up at the intermission with Denise Schroff, Jason Seahorn, and Kelly Stoffer in the studio. Also, Jay's HBCU breakdown coming up at the half. Squibbed and taken by the up man at the 20 yard line. Up to the 38 is Travis Crosby on the return. So I would assume a chance to take a knee here for Lewis Kendall and AT to take a 17 point lead to the locker room. I think you're going to see the Aggies take a knee and get a tremendous round of applause from the Aggie fans here in the stand with the performance that they've done here in the first half in Greensboro. War, Kendall, Drake, and Lawrence with TDs in this half for AT. Wilson and Fleck. Touchdowns as well, and they take a knee, and that's going to take us to the end of the first half here in Greensboro. 27-10, North Carolina A&T leading Howard here at the intermission. So now let's head to the studio for the Sports Center U halftime report. In the studio, here's Anish Shroff, Jason Seahorn, and Kelly Stauffer. All right, thank you very much, Mark. We're going to get you back out to Greensboro shortly. Jay Walker is going to give you his little weekend preview in the HBCU. And he's Rob, Jason Seahorn. Here's this week's HBCU breakdown. The story of black college football this year has been the play of Alabama State star running back Isaiah Crowell. The former University of Georgia running back is playing lights out football. The past three games, his numbers are remarkable. He's averaged 158 yards per game and an eye-popping 9.2 yards per carry for the Hornets. If Crowell can continue to play at this pace, he'll clearly be playing in the National Football League next year. The Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference is happy to get last weekend out of the way. It was what you would call money ball as Florida A&M, Bethune-Cookman, and Savannah State went on the road to play what has become known as paycheck games. And while many people question whether they should play these games or not, keep this in mind. The $900,000 reportedly paid to Florida A&M goes a long way to funding athletics down in Tallahassee. And not just the football program, but the entire sports program. A question looming down in the SWAC is all corn state for real. Head coach Jay Hobson has the Braves with a three and one record. Their one loss came to Mississippi State. Questions remain if the Braves are truly ready to contend for a title. But I think a lot of those questions will be answered as they travel to Montgomery this weekend to take on head coach Reggie Barlow's Alabama State. Anise, that's this week's version of the HBCU Breakdown. All right, thank you, Jay. Looking ahead to this week. Howard just one touchdown in the first half against North Carolina A&T. David Wilson hauling it in 27 to 10. North Carolina A&T on top. The Mideastern. This halftime report is brought to you by the Cree LED bulb, the biggest thing since the light bulb. You see, two and two tough loss last Friday to Fresno State. That is Howard University's Showtime Marching Band. Jay Walker tried to try out. Couldn't get in the marching band. He did make the football team, though. The light bulbs in your house were invented by... The dulcet tones of the blue and gold marching machine, North Carolina A&T's band, at home in Greensboro, North Carolina A&T up 17 at the half. The second half after this. Football primetime presented by McDonald's. We'll get set for the second half from here in Greensboro at Aggie Stadium. North Carolina A&T with the 17-point lead over the Howard Bison. 
Glad you could join us from Greensboro on this Thursday night. Mark Neely along with former NFL quarterback Jay Walker. He's still feeling the mojo from the beginning of the conference season here in the MEAC. It's, t- it's taking shape right now, and I think what we're learning is, yes, North Carolina a is as good as those preseason uh, wins have indicated for them, and Howard University, the wide receiver core, has to step up. The quarterback is good, but they've got no help from the wide receivers. Yeah, that was key in the first half. Drops by the Howard wide receivers, and they really had some issues on special teams, the Vices did. Well, that's the key. You know, that's something you shouldn't have to correct four games into the season that really came back to haunt them and bite them during this football game. You had the block punt there, which is huge, which gave a and momentum. It was a great throw here from Lewis Kendall to his fullback out in the flat. They had trouble covering the fullback throughout the first half. But Greg McGee's a good one. He came out throwing darts. This is the perfectly thrown ball that leads to an interception. And North Carolina a and converted both of its turnovers against Howard in the touchdown. This is the payoff with Dominique Drake going over the top for the score in a game where the defense really took advantage of opportunities. And I think one of the key things you see the stats there, total yards is about the same, but good teams are going to force you to turn the football over and turn those turnovers into points. And that's really the big difference in this football contest. And six Howard penalties for 80 yards. You see the red zone, three trips for a and with three touchdowns. They came into this game having eight red zone visits on the season with only two touchdowns. They've been much better in the red zone so far tonight. Interim head coach for the Howard Bison, Rayford Petty. His team down 17, but by Broadway's Aggies trying to make it seven straight wins going back to last year. And a and going to have the football to begin the half. And that's important. If you're North Carolina a and put some more points on the board, eliminate hope for Howard University, and the opposite for, uh, for Howard, you've got to do whatever you can to make sure A&T does not score any more points so you can keep the lead within striking distance. Lawrence will not bring it out, so A&T to begin at their own 25-yard line. The quarterback, Lewis Kendall. So Kendall in the first half. The win streak, six games right now. That's going back to last year, beating Norfolk State. Florida A&M, South Carolina State, and NC Central, and this year against Appalachian State. That was a big win on the road to begin the year. Those are some really good football teams and programs that they've beat, defeated during this winning streak. I mean, Florida a and a good one. South Carolina State's a good one. North Carolina Central's a good one. App State's traditionally a great one. A lot of good things are taking place here in Greensboro for this North Carolina A&T football program with Coach Rob Broadway at the helm. Carried by Drake. First half passing numbers for Kendall, 6 of 8, 91 yards, 1 TD. Kendall, time, throws it across to the 29-yard line. Jordan Monette making the tackle of Laquan Swan. For a gain of five. Last five seasons for a and Last year, 7-4, 5-3 in conference. 5-6, and 4-4 four and four in conference two years ago. They've won four of the last five against Howard. Last Howard win against A&T was two years ago, 2011. Third down and six. Kendall on the move and way high over the head of Desmond Lawrence. And it's a quick three and out for a and And behind the play, Kendall is slow to get up. He took a hit there rolling out. Anytime as a right-handed quarterback, you're rolling out or running to your left trying to make the throw. You leave your body exposed, and the defender came up and put a little hit on him, landed awkwardly. We'll keep an eye on that to make sure he's okay. Just the momentum here of the throw. He's going to his left. He's fully exposed. At that point, you're fully exposed. Can't step into the throw and takes a pretty good shot. Just the second punt of the game for a and Dominic Kuskura, and it gets blocked. It'll roll out of bounds on the 22-yard line. Well, early in this game, it was a and that blocked a Howard punt, and now the Bison trying to turn things the other way with a punt block here early in the second half. They got great penetration, and this is almost a, a bull rush by the punt block team there. They're going to come hard in the middle. There's a wall set up, but they just collapse the wall. 
two white jerseys around the punter for the block. Howard University with a big turnover to start the second half. Jermaine Clark was one of the trio Howard Bison defenders there. Kind of tough to tell who got the hand on it. But nonetheless, the punt block and the Bison's first possession of the second half. They take it over at the 22 of AT. Motion goes Hartman. Hand it off to William Parker. For the 21 for a gain of a couple on first down. Rushing yards are really hard. North Carolina AT does not allow you to run the football. They just they're gonna let you do a lot of things, but it won't be running the football down their throats. But to go back to last season, the last time an AT defense allowed a rushing touchdown. Parker inside the 20. 17. Third and about five. Well, they haven't given up a rushing touchdown in roughly 26 quarters. So if you're Howard and you know that, do you force the run right now, or do you go with your quarterback and allow him to throw and just say, you can tell by their alignment, they're not taking anybody outside of the box, so they're going to keep the box crowded. You've got to throw the football. And a first down and more headed towards the end zone. Hartman is in touchdown. Well, McGee finding Stuart Hartman. First touchdown of the season for Hartman. And Howard with a big answer to begin this half. He held on to the football and then it became a great effort. Ball gets there in a hurry. Hartman has the will to say we need to get points on the board. Scores. Howard University with a quick response here in the second half. Hartman, one touchdown catch last year as a sophomore, his first this year as a junior. And the point after her, and he missed it. Wide left. Fleck with the point after attempt, he misses. And now each team has missed the point after tonight. Well, that was a bullet from McGee to Hartman. And it's 27-16 A&T. Introducing the great ultimate wing and appetizer bar only at Golden Corral. It's all you can eat. to you by McDonald's. And yes, she caught up for just a flash of a second if you weren't with us in the first quarter that the sprinklers did come on briefly. That's what those were. We've had it all. It's been entertaining here in Greensboro. And he's going to bring it out. Tony McRae has been an outstanding returner. He did a 91-yard return for touchdown at Appalachian State. Brings it out to the 20. He took a pretty good lick at the end of it. He's running full speed. He's got bodies going full speed. Woo. Special teams. Devin Rollins was one of them that made the contact on McCray. Well, Howard took advantage of the punt block, turned it into points. A&T leading the BAC kick return out is coming in. It's not been a big factor so far tonight. This is Lawrence. He's a touchdown in this game for just a, about a half yard. Jordan Monette, number 47 with the tackle. North Carolina A&T needs to be careful. You know, they come out flat here in the second half. Maybe there was too much energy during the halftime show because the fans are kind of quiet, sick on their hands. White jerseys are starting to fly to the football. This is that danger zone for North Carolina A&T. 11-point lead, not safe with this much football left to be played. And yeah, with a field goal near the end of the first half and a touchdown, though, missing the PAT. The last nine points of this game scored by Howard on the run. It was Kendall. He runs out of bounds back at the 19th, so he's going to lose a couple of yards there. And 
one thing we notice for North Carolina A&T, for them to be successful offensively, they like to establish control of the line of scrimmage. They haven't been able to just run the football straight at the Howard Bison defense. They've had to rely on the pass. Well, now that you've got a lead, you want to be able to run the football, but the Bison are holding firm, forcing A&T into passing situations. Third down and 11. That's Lawrence number five in the slot there near the bottom of your screen. Four receivers, two to each side. Lewis Kendall on third and long. Kendall dumps it off. Only up to the 25 yard line. Be well short of the first down after the completion to Torian Warren. And the body English on the Howard sideline is exciting. You can't tell they're down by 11. They are coming out ready to play, screaming at each other, yelling. They completely did a 180 compared to the first half, but they seem shell shocked. And give credit to Coach Petty. Whatever he said at halftime worked for this Bison football team. Well, Dominic Friscura had only one punt in the first half, and his first punt of the second half was blocked and led to the touchdown. Let's see if they come after him again. Gets this one off. And take it at the 37 and then immediately tackled back at the 35. Ayagoro. So Howard's going to begin around their own 40 yard line. Greg McGee, the starting quarterback for Howard. Been starting since he was a freshman, since he set foot on campus in Washington, D.C. And pretty good. Accurate with his throws tonight. Very effective running the football, buying time. He just does some things that you just can't coach. And as a defensive coordinator, when you've got a quarterback that's accurate, strong, can run, very tough to defend. And he showed that he is the real deal this evening. Fakes the hand off. The lefty wants to throw it. It just slings it out of bounds. Took a hit there at the end. McGee's had at least three, if not four, passes dropped tonight. And we're right on the money. This one he just had to get rid of. Yep. And, and do you think AT realized how good he is? They said, we're going to hit you hard. There's <laughs> no more takedowns, soft tackles. I think they've established anytime we get a chance to hit Greg McGee, they're going to try and hit him pretty hard. William Parker cuts it back upfield, found a crease to the 45. Did he lose the football? He did. Was it down by contact, but the scrum is on. The officials pull the players off the pile to try to see who has the football. a t came away with it, and they say they have it. And do so. Like Isaiah Martin may have recovered it. Now let's watch and see if the ball was down. No, it definitely well, came out early. Yep. That's, that's a legit fumble. And for that kind of run, when you're going to lower your shoulder like that, the first thing you have to do is secure the ball with two hands. He kept one hand on the football. Helmet knocks it out. Turnover Howard. ant has got the football back. Third Howard turnover. Their first two turnovers were turned into touchdowns by a and Of course, the punt blocks don't count as turnovers, but each team has a punt block today. The Howard miscues, several of which have come on special teams. So first down from the 45, handoff, and pretty good head of steam, Tariq Cohen to the 37 yard line. Where he stopped by Ron Resby to pick up. About nine. That's the true freshman Cohen who they're excited about. Earned playing time, low center of gravity. He can really scoop. Obviously, the 733 really sticks out from their last game against Old Dominion when things fell apart. There's a first down oh, run again up to the 29 yard line. And he's special. He's special. Did you did you notice how he was able to stop on the dime and change directions? Nice cut by Cohen. Oh, I mean that that's something is you have a running back with the ability to cut and break ankles like that. We've got a special talent. First down, Aggies at the 29 of Howard. Now they pitch it to him. Cuts it back to the 25 yard line. There is a flag now. 
these gold jerseys of A&T sometimes when the flags fly around the line of scrimmage it's tough to see those flags. And there is a Howard player down. A couple of Howard players down. Now the first Howard player. Devin Ronalds number 40 has gotten to his feet and is walking off. That may be number 44 Tommy Boozer it is a sophomore out of Greenbelt Maryland. You see two. Defenders on the ground are in the same area. Normally, they probably collided into each other trying to tackle the ball carrier. Let's take another look. Oh, oh yeah, man. Oh, man. Woo. Wow. That's, that's helmet scary. Helmet. That's scary. Helmet to helmet contact between the teammates. Yeah, Cohen was able to. Get in between the would-be tacklers, and that's Tommy Boozer, the defensive tackle for Howard, and he's number 44. And Devin Rollins, the starting middle linebacker. Those are two big hitters. And, and I don't mean to make light of the injuries, and it's great that they're both on their feet and doing okay. But what does it say about Cone, with his speed, to have two defenders behind him hit each other like that? And he was able to split the difference. Right. Football is all about angles. Well, it's good to see Boozer there get to the sideline. Looking at that replay, he and Rollins helmet to helmet very hard. Now the penalty was against AT, so it's a first down at 25. That's dumped off to the 42 yard line. David Gresham Chisholm with the tackle. The Utah State, San Jose State. Tomorrow night, 8 Eastern on ESPN. On the West Conference Battle in Middle Tennessee, BYU here on ESPNU. We put the spotlight in the WWW last week on Chucky e. Keaton and Utah State. They gave the Trojans a little scare. Oh, yes. Yeah, had a chance to win there in LA. No question about it. Second down and 24. Kendall has time to throw and incomplete at the 10. Looking his pass is incomplete. It's Torian Warren, who's the intended receiver. Right now, if I'm North Carolina AT, I, I put Cohen back in the game. I mean, he's been a difference maker in this contest. He's been that spark plug that they need. They just seem to be not as exciting, not as explosive. Obviously, Desmond Lawrence is very explosive at the wide receiver position, but I think Howard has figured him out a little bit. They're putting one person underneath Lawrence and one over the top, taking away the deep threat. Well, Cohen, four rushes, 45 yards. He's not in there at the moment. And pre-stamp whistle. Delay a game. Offense. Seven. So the play clock got down to zero. That's going to add another five yards to this third and very long. They need to make the 20-yard line of Howard for a first down here. Ball's pushed all the way almost back to midfield. Call it third and 29. Kendall puts it underneath. To the 35 yard line, Landis Schaffner. Drake actually there with the catch. But Devin Rollins, number 40, with the tackle. That's one of the two. Rollins and Boozer were involved with that helmet to helmet hit, but Rollins has stayed in there. No, 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 did not take advantage of the turnover there. Good stop by Howard. Now, North Carolina AT going to see if they can pin him. Punt angling towards the corner, and it takes a bounce into the end zone. It'll be a touchback. 
So Howard will begin at their own 20-yard line. It was 7.31 to play in this third quarter. And the Aggies only a 27-16 lead. When we come back, Walker's weekend watch. Jay will let you know what you need to pay attention to this weekend in college football. job of him and Cam Cam, the new offensive coordinator, coming in and installing a pro offense that not only helped the program, but his draft stock has increased now because he's pro ready. By the way, I was told Mettenberger's mother got the week off this week. <laughs> Just <laughs> to avoid any kind of issues. That's the SEC for you, baby. McGee dumps that off to Ayagoro near the 30-yard line. Richard Iagoro, who's a junior in Greenbelt, Maryland. 5'7", 170 pounder, was good wheels up. Marked about at the 28. Just second down at two. And the handoff, Phil Yaw. And this is an opportunity for Phil Yaw to really grab control of that running back position. You have William Parker fumble at a crucial time in the game. If you're a freshman, you get your number called, they're going to give you some carry. Hold on to the football and make your mark now. Another tackle for Klotfelter, no gain. So it's third down and two. Freshman Phil Yaw is the back. Hand it off to Phil Yaw. And he didn't get, well, I don't think he got there. Nope, he needed to get across the 30. And he's going to be a couple yards still short. Fourth down. It's not by North Carolina A&T. The Aggies, we mentioned earlier how difficult they are to run on. When you get in those obvious run situations, I think you've got to throw the football in order to beat North Carolina A&T. Just can't run the ball when they know it's coming. They're too good, too stout up front. John Fleck to punt. Here they had a second and two back-to-back -back running plays. No yardage gained on either one. I think it bounce and out of bounds. Around the 30. Well, it's a doubleheader at college football at ESPNU Saturday. First to 3.30. It's the All-State Game of the Week as Wake Forest takes on third-ranked Clemson. And then at 7, 20th-ranked Florida takes on Kentucky, presented by Five Hour Energy. Both games are live on Watch ESPN. Well, the last time Kentucky beat Florida, it was 1986. What was going on in 86? Top Gun was the top grossing movie that year. Best picture, though, was out of Africa. Gas was under a buck a gallon, and Bob Barker's hair color was black because he still dyed it. He didn't start uh, going natural until the next year when the gray started to come out in 87. I want that 93-cent gas. Yeah, how fine Where, is that? that back. I can go without the movies <laughs> and all the dye. I'll keep gas. A tackle for loss. <laughs> Lewis brought down to the backfield by Joseph Dillard, sophomore out of Sewanee, Georgia. Loss of three. Second down. And T with the 27-16 lead. They led it 27-10 at the half. Long look to the sideline. Lewis Kendall in the AT offense. AT trying to spread the Bison defense out, going with the four wide receiver look. Howard's not budging, keeping everybody close to the line of scrimmage. Kendall looking across the middle. He had two gold jerseys in the vicinity, but it's completed at the 39 yard line. Regain a six. Completion to Bullock. Something wrong with the spacing here. Two wide receivers in the same area. Poor spacing, but they were able to get the completed pass. It's Bullock and Weaver right in the same vicinity. First half, seven possessions, one punt. Second half, three possessions, three punts. And going deep for Weaver and incomplete at the 20. He's flagged. He's out. Curtis Simmons had the coverage on Weaver. Outside, defense, number nine, Fabio Pillen, 
Remains third down. Well, it's broad Resby offsides, and that's a tough call against the Howard defense there. And that's why Lewis Kendall threw the ball downfield, trying to take advantage of the free play. Now it's still third down and a tough two yards. But AT needs to get in order to keep the drive going. And Dominic Drake is the back four receiver look again with two to each side. Lewis with a lot of time throwing deep across the middle and nearly intercepted at the 32 yard line. Should have been an easy interception. The ball clearly got away from Kendall, and this is the free safety, Cameron Alston. Uh, got to make that play there. Right to him. I don't know if you get an easier interception. Ball sailed. Missed opportunity for a big play by the Bison defense. Grant Bullock was the intended receiver for AT. Garo back to receive the punt from Frescura. Bounces out of bounds about the 16 yard line. 422 left third quarter. 27 16 AT. Wake Forest Clemson at 3.30, then Florida, Kentucky, Saturday on ESPNU. Would you rather be watching a bobber than a TV? Or maybe trade your work site for a campsite? Would you like to teach your kids something school never could? Then you belong at Bass Pro Shops. Check out all the great deals during our fall into savings sale. Like this Under Armour. ESPNU College Football Primetime. Brought to you by AT&T. Rethink Possible and AutoZone. For the auto parts, accessories, and advice you need, get in the zone. AutoZone. Glad you could join us. From Aggie Stadium in Greensboro, North Carolina, Mark Neely along with Jay Walker and ESPNU crew. Howard begins at their own 16. The draw play to Philly is nowhere and will lose a yard or two. I understand what offensive coordinator Ted White is trying to do for Howard. When, when you can't line up and just play smash mouth football, you've got to come up with these off tackle draws and counter plays with misdirection. But AT is not being fooled. Their rush defense has been phenomenal tonight. Their loss of two, second and 12. And wow. did he? Nope. Incomplete. Another drop. David Wilson, who had a touchdown catch early in this game. And that's at least four that I can count, Jay, that were right there that should have been caught. He dropped the touchdown earlier, and this ball was perfectly thrown. In stride down the seam, you have to make that catch. If you're David Wilson. And when I say four, not all by Wilson, but collectively by the wide receivers for Howard. Yep. And now a quick third out and 12. Howard was down in this game late in the first half, 27-7. So they got back in it at 27-16. And danger without a conversion here of having to punt deep in their own end. And McGee lost it with touch. But incomplete at the 45-yard line. Looking for Booker, but Devontae Graham, who had nine tackles in the first half, was there on the coverage. And, and Greg McGee, you've got to run this football. You've got legs. Watch this when he steps up. He can run and get 10 yards. There was nobody on the outside. Maybe Devontae Grant might have been there number four, but he was one move on him. You pick up the first down. I think that's one of the few times tonight we've seen Greg McGee make a poor decision on when he should run the football or throw the football. John Fleck punting for Howard. Standing at his own goal line. He set up the return. And he lost the football. That was Devontae Graham and Howard. Let's see if they jumped on it. There's a white jersey there. And Howard has the football. The play. Well, special teams have been a big thorn in the side of Howard tonight, but this time. The turnover on special teams comes on the a and side, and this helps flip the field. And Graham, one of the best punt returners in FCS football, just bobbles it. And great recognition by the Howard special team. Come up and with the fumble recovery. So from the 48 of a and Eric Pittman looked to be the one that recovered it for Howard, and now Philly off. 
Daniel Pinnock's number 93 was the one who initially helped pull him to the ground. That running game right now is just not really going anywhere for Howard yet. A and stuffing it. They are stuffing the run. They're doing a great job keeping bodies close to the line of scrimmage and controlling the line of scrimmage. If you're Howard, you just got to come out and throw the ball. Make this a passing shootout. If you've got a quarterback that's as good as McGee, tell those wide receivers to make some catches and just start letting the ball fly all over the field. McGee across the middle and out of reach of Hartman. McGee's he has three complete. catches tonight. And I think at this point in the game, remember when we had the call with the Howard coaches, they talked about their no huddle offense. They've got three speeds. I jump start. I go to the fastest speed you have right now because the offense seems to be a little flat at times, and you've got to kickstart this offense so they can put some points on the board. Well, they call that top end the racehorse level, and they need to. Get a little giddy up going right now. Here comes the blitz from down the middle and dropped again at the 15 yard line. Rodney Tyson had two defenders that he had beaten and he had a chance to haul this one and to take it to the end zone. McGee puts plenty of air underneath the throw, allowing Tyson to run underneath it. You got to leave your feet. You have to make that catch. The ball's in the air, lay out, put two hands on him. McGee takes a hit. They've made it clear. They're going to put as many licks on Greg McGee as they can. Ryan. Missed opportunity for Howard University. Ryan Houston made that hit on the quarterback. Flex punt. Takes him a bounce right near the pylon, and it's going to be marked out. Nope. Touchback. The way he was walking towards the pylon, I thought he was going to mark it at the one yard line, but it's a touchback. It close. And Fleck frustrated. Almost pinned him in around the one. Well, NCAA and AT has had a great line of terrific players in their history. One of those players, Elvin Bethea, who played here in 1965 to 68, went into the NFL with the Houston Oilers. Owns a number of their records. Eight-time Pro Bowler and went into Canton in 2003. Nice move there by Drake. On the 27-yard line. Dominic Drake on the Seven yards. We're being brought down by Cameron Alston. Cameron Alston on the tackle. Second down. A&T in this half, four punts. They only punted one time in the first half. So offensively, it's been a bit of a stalemate here recently. Kendall finds an open receiver at the 46-yard line. Kendall's Swan. The redshirt sophomore out of Sanford, North Carolina, goes for 21 yards. Yeah, Kendall, quick release, stops his rollout. Great job. You'll see the tight end just get out. Nice, clean outside release to the corner. That's where he wants to go with the football. Come off the play action. Kendall recognized right away, made the throw. Great catch by Daquan Swan. Here's the pitch. Drake and a blocker. Makes a nice sidestep move and another one before he's pulled down at the 45 by Cameron Olsen. A couple of nifty moves there by Dominic Drake for some extra yardage and gaining seven. He's got some step. A little jitterbug move along Second the outside. Three. Did a good job making the first would-be tackler miss. Turned a play that really was defended well into positive yardage for the Aggies. Rick leaves the game. Ricky Lewis now the back, and he has the carry. Cuts trying to turn that left corner. Pulled down at the 41-yard line. Ricky Lewis on the carry. That's Jordan Monette, number 47, down the bison bringing 42. it down. Tackled there. By Jordan Monette. But not before he got another. On a first down for A and T. First down. At the 42 yard line of Howard. Under a minute to go in this third quarter. Only points of this third quarter. The Hartman 17 yard touchdown catch for the Bison. Now set back at the 47 yard line of AT. Trayvon Sheets. Bringing down Kendall. 
It's just a great individual effort by Sheets, getting to the quarterback, bringing the pressure. He's got defensive linemen, and you, and you can win your battles. That's what the matchup is, and did a good job. Inside stunt, they just didn't block him. That's a breakdown in the protection, and Sheets with the sack. And a loss of 11, second down and 21, and now the ball back on the a t side of the field at 47. Kendall to midfield for about three yards. That should take us to the end of the third quarter. Again, the only scoring in the third quarter, the Hartman touchdown catch. They were down 20 at one point, how it was. They're down 27-16. This game is headed into the fourth quarter in Greensboro. It's the conference opener in the MEAC between these rivals. Wake Forest Clemson. And the stakes on special teams have been the storyline in this one. Michael Weaver with the punt block. Devin Moore, the fullback, with the touchdown catch for the first score of the game. And then interception for Devontae Graham. And then a punt block for Howard that they turned into points. The touchdown catch for Hartman. And it's a 27-16 game as we head into the fourth quarter. That's a storyline, but I think another statistic we can put on there, drop balls. Just imagine if Howard would have held on to just half of the balls that they've dropped this evening could be a completely different score we see on the scoreboard. Third down and 18 from the 49. And a throw incomplete. Broken up at the last moment at the 10-yard line. Curtis Simmons there to break it up. Desmond Lawrence was the intended receiver. Desmond Lawrence is the burner for the A&T offense. And these are guys, a quarterback, I say, I can never underthrow it. Throw it out as far as you can. He's got him beat by eight yards. Put it out there. He's going to run and go get it. That's a throw there that Lewis Kendall wish he could have back. No question, Lawrence had to slow down there at the end for that. And the defender able to catch up to him. The punt on fourth down. Rugby style punt, Dominic Frescura. Bounces out of bounds around the 20. Well, undefeated SEC West rivals square off to Tuscaloosa on Saturday night on ESPN as Bo Wallace leads number 21 Ole Miss against A.J. McCarron and top ranked Alabama. College football primetime presented by Hampton Hotels. Ole Miss at Alabama at 6.30 on ESPN. Also live on Watch ESPN on Ole Miss. Under Hugh Freeze, 3-0 for the first time since 89. Haven't won at Tuscaloosa, though, since the year before that in 88. I think the story for Ole Miss, they're a year ahead of schedule. I mean, they signed the top recruiting class last year. It normally takes a year or two for those young babies to develop into good football players, but Coach Freeze has them playing great football, and they think they can go in there and beat Alabama. So early in this fourth quarter, Howard takes over. Keeping it, Greg McGee to the 29. Howard was down 27-7 in this game late in the first half, so they have scored the game's last nine points. Four receivers, three to the left side on second down and seven. McGee avoids the rush. Gets back maybe to the line of scrimmage. Travis Crosby caught up to him. Crosby is senior. who was second team all MEAC last year with the stop. The leading tackler on the season coming into tonight. And we've seen both defenses start to take over this football game. Coming in, we knew they were really good. And early on, they gave up some big plays. But now the defenses are starting to dictate the pace and tempo of play. Dumps it off to Booker, who's going to be several yards shy of the first down where he's McGee's tackled at the 33. Jonathan Booker, but he's stopped by Devontae Graham for a nominal game. Howard will have to bring out the punt. Bring him a fourth down. They're, they're keeping it vanilla on defense for North Carolina A&T. No Keep everything in front of you and make solid open field tackles. And right now, they're just trying to hold on to this lead, and their defense is doing a good job. Devontae Graham back at his own 35-yard line to receive this punt. John Fleck. 
Punt gets it off and a high booming punt. Fair catch called for and bobbled but grabbed by Graham back around the 21-yard line. That bobble cost him a few yards. 13.02 to play fourth quarter from Greensboro. The Midi. Honored here on the campus and NCAA A and T is Dr. Ronald McNair, who was one of the victims of the Challenger disaster in 1986. He received his Bachelor of Science degree in physics from A&T, picked up his doctorate in physics from MIT, and was posthumously awarded the Congressional Space Medal of Honor. Dr. Ronald McNair passed away in 86 at the Challenger explosion, class of 1971, here in North Carolina A&T. To believe it's been you know, we're a few years away from that being 30 years ago the challenger disaster yeah. a t with possession That's squirting through for a couple of yards with dominic drake who has a little hitch now in his giddy up and that's unfortunate so drake leaves because you put a good hit on him and guess what they bring in cohen and cohen's been their number one weapon I'd find a way to get him the football right now. They fake the handoff to him, and the pass is too high for Lawrence and incomplete. It seems as if offensively, North Carolina A&T, the air came out the tires. You know, they're operating on four flat tires right now. Well, Howard, four straight three and outs, and you look at A&T, five possessions in this half, they punted five times. And that's when we talked about the defenses slowly took over and started to dictate the pace and tempo of the game. And this became a defensive struggle. And fortunately for North Carolina A&T, they've got an 11-point lead. One of those five punts for A&T, their first of this half was blocked. With the shuttle pass, but that is well read. By Damon Gresham Chisholm, number 96, just a sophomore out of Covington, Georgia. Chisholm's a good one. Best player in that defensive line. Had a breakout freshman year. All MEAC performer. And he sniffs it out. Nowhere for Cohen to go. Big play for Howard. So six consecutive punt for A&T here in the second half. Dominic Frescura, who had only one punt in the first half. Went after that one, and he just got it away. Ayagoro watches it bounce down near the 31-yard line. 47-yard punt for Dominic Frescura with no return. On ESPNU this Saturday, it all begins at noon Eastern. Miami against South Florida. 3.30, Wake Forest is at number three, Clemson. Then it's 7 Eastern, 20th ranked Florida, batting on all those injuries. They're in Lexington to face Kentucky and Southern Miss and Boise State at 10.15 Eastern. At, at what point do you think South Florida, you start questioning, would you rather be a Western Kentucky or would you rather be a South Florida? They're taking it on the chin right now. Talking about Willie Taggart, yeah. the head coach, who did <laughs> such a great job for Western Kentucky at his alma mater but has roots in the Tampa Bay area, right? Which was the attraction for him to go to South Florida. Yeah, I would agree though. Those yeah. roots, those, you can get uprooted yeah. very quickly unless they get some W's. They need to win. Howard begins at their own 32 yard line. And McGee, pass almost intercepted at the 36 yard line. Intended receiver was Jimmy Johnson, the tight end. But it was Travis Crosby, number one, there on the coverage. It's a throw here. Good job of undercutting the route. Crosby, the defender, yeah. almost came up with a huge interception. I, I do like coming out throwing the ball on first down. And they haven't I done that a while. At this point in the game, you've got to say we're going to throw the football all over the field and let it fly. Tonight, only averaging 2.4 per carry. 
you, you can win a number of football games if you can stop teams from running the football that effectively. Uh, the way the reason for the stoppage, the official telling the band to stop playing, so a band warning. They fight for the pass there, and it winds up in the hands of Stuart Hartman. A pass completion of eight yards. Olatoye with the coverage. So the, the blue and gold marching machine has to keep it quiet here with Howard with possession of a third down and two. Uprooted, but McGee falling forward very close to the marker. McGee going to come down to the spot. Takes ball across the 40. That, that's a close one. I think he's right on it. Well, let's say he's a hair short, Jay. Under 11 minutes to play. Do you take any kind of gamble in your own end at the 42? Yep. I would. At this point, if it's less than you know, a couple inches, Right now, the way the defense has been playing, where they've slowed down and not put any points, not allowed North Carolina A&T to score any points, I think this is four down territory. You're on the road. You've got 10 minutes, 49 seconds to go. You've got to show that you can score these 11 points you need to get in order just to tie this football game. Well, he is a little short. So let's see. Interim head coach Ray for Petty. You're going to take your recommendation Jay and go for this on fourth and inches and I think you say at a certain point as a coach hey, if we can't pick up eight inches we don't deserve to win the football game so the bison to go for it on fourth and inches your own 42 yard line Smart move to double team number 73 in gold, Mike McNeil. He had the center. Philly has the back. Handed to him. Philly has the first down. And a lot more. Cross midfield. Tackled at the 41 yard line of AT. He needed about eight inches and standing at 18 yards. Flag goes at the 45. It didn't look good. Early on, I thought he was going to be tackled for a loss behind the line of scrimmage, but he had the patience and the lane opened up. And there is a flag at the 45 of AT. Unsportsmanlike on the offense, number five, 15-yard penalty, first down. So dead ball is the key there on the personal foul, so it will be a first down for Howard. But it just cost them yardage, and now they're not far from where they were, but they do have a first down at their own 44 yard line. So, out of all that, they gained two yards, but they do have the first yard, and the penalties now 100 yards of penalties against the Bison. McGee pulls it down, does run with it. For a couple of yards to the 46. Been covered by North Carolina AT. And, you know, at this point when you're in the game, if you're Greg McGee, you become the running game. If you can run for three or four yards, yards every time you carry the football, that's good. That's better than handing off the ball to a running back and you keep the defense honest. McGee, screen pass to fill you out of the backfield. First down at to the 38-yard line of A&T. First down after a pickup of 16. Phil, he's going to be a good one. I mean, as a freshman, watch him make the catch and turn north-south right away. One cut, go. Oh, they teach that. You, you try and teach a running back. Just take one cut and get upfield. Seems as if he does it naturally, particularly since he's a freshman. He's been well coached in high school. Looks right, pulled it down. Now throws way out of bounds just to get rid of it. But his initial read McGee's was to the right side. Didn't like what he saw to the short Second side of the field and threw it out of bounds here to the near side. And when you've got a team that is really good at stopping the run, that normally means they've got really good defensive linemen that are big boys up front. Rapid fire. Get as many plays as you can off to make them tired. I don't get the impression that North Carolina a t is tired defensively. And he moves. The left tackle moves. Yeah. False start. Offense. 
John Smith the left tackle moved early. I'm still trying to find that sense of urgency from Howard offensively. Still a two score game here for Howard they were down by 20 at one point. Takes the handoff to Parker and a pass completion to Iagoro. Here the marker for another first down at the 29. Tackled by Landis Schaffner. Good throw. I mean, watch the release. <laughs> He's a good one. That was a good look from our end zone camera down there. Coming right at you. A little bit short. Third down and one. Parker. Throws the shoulder and has the first down to the 26 yard line. So the drive continues for the Bison. Michael Neal, the defensive tackle, with the stop. And that's one thing we can say about the offensive line from Howard. They've done a pretty good job. The key hasn't been sacked much. He's been able to get rid of the football. They're doing a good job protecting their quarterback. McGee, play fake, going Hartman's way. And he dropped that. No, he caught it. At the 12, no incomplete. I mean, Hartman lobbying there, but I think he's lobbying for a penalty. And that's one that the receiver, if you make the catch, come up. Once you leave your feet, come up and show the ball to the official right away. Well, he didn't catch it cleanly, but he's trying to sell that it came off his hands and like he trapped it on his thigh. But from that angle, we certainly can't tell. Uh, timeout. First charge timeout of the half. Now you wonder. It would be a 30 second timeout. So we'll step aside for a half a minute with 904 to play in this fourth quarter from Greensboro. Dude, I need some mighty wings. They make me want to dance. <laughs> ESPNU College Football Primetime is presented by McDonald's. I'm loving it. And in part by Buick. Visit your local Buick dealer to see why thousands of people are switching to Buick each month. Thanks for joining us on this Thursday night from Greensboro. Mark Neely along with Jay Walker and our ESPNU crew for the MIAC opener in conference play 27-16 A&T leading. Even though Howard in this game, Jay, has 27 more total yards and have run 24 more plays than A&T in this game. They are down 27-16. The throw comes to the near sideline and a completion to high goal. 24, stopped by Travis Crosby. And I think, you know, those statistics just show you how good A&T is when they've been, but they don't break. They've been on the field for a number of plays, but they still are just clamping down on the running game, making the Howard rushing game basically non-existent. And they're making solid open field tackles. This is the 80th offensive play of the game for Howard right here. And a third down and seven, a key, key down. They try to keep the drive alive, and he throws it low, and it completed the 15-yard line. He was under duress there, and a complete pass intended for Rodney Tyson. Well, that was a great job by Devontae Grant, the outside linebacker for North Carolina A&T. Watch, you know, watch him here. Watch him get low. Watch him win the battle of leverage and make himself small. Dip. He's almost going to put his shoulder on the ground to get underneath that offensive tackle trying to block him. Forces McGee to leave the pocket and throw the ball early. That's a great play by Devontae Grant using leverage and forcing the quarterback to, to get pressure on the quarterback, I should say. Reflect hit from 26 yards late in the first half. This is a 40 yard attempt off the left hash. It is up away and has the distance and good. So Fleck connects on his second field goal of the night and makes this a one score game 27 19, 8 18 to go in Greensboro. MTSU versus BYU. Howard has scored the game's last 12 points. We're down to 8-18 left here in the fourth quarter. 27-19, North Carolina A&T with the lead. As Howard kicks off. From the one. Up to the 21-yard line. A 
turned by Sprint. So you look at the last six possessions, all resulted in punts, and the first one was blocked. Ouch. That's painful to, to look at. And when you think about, they had, they didn't even have the ability to take advantage of a turnover they received when they got the ball in great field position. AT came out looking sharp offensively, but give credit to the Howard defense. They made the adjustments as well. AT's offense is just run into a brick wall. Hand it off to Dominic Drake. He's getting tackled at the 25 yard line. One of those in that posse to make the stop. Jordan Monette, 47. Second down at five. Clock running under eight minutes to play. Out of the eye formation. Kindle, play fake. Under heat. Tackled at the 19 yard line. Well, he avoided Trey Hogglebook initially, but he was able to come back and bring him down. The fourth sack of the game for the Howard defense. That's just great work by Hogglebook, number 97. Pressure from the interior lineman position. This struggles for North Carolina A&T continue with the Howard Bison defense has made an impact. And a third and 12 upcoming for the Aggies. Four receivers set, two to each side. And just two of 11 on third down tonight. A lot of time, but Kendall has to make a decision, throws it. Dangerous passing, complete at the 35-yard line. Cameron Alston, number 10, came flying in for Howard and almost picked that off. Nancy almost speechless. And you see the pressure. Look how many white jerseys you see around the football. If you count them, there's one, two, there are five white jerseys and only two yellow. You've got to find a different place to go with the football. Five three and outs this half now for the AT offense as they punt again. So screw up with a short punt. Let's see where they mark it, but it didn't even come close to making it past midfield. Well, it's a doubleheader at college football on ESPNU Saturday, first at 3.30. It's the All-State game of the week. Wake Forest takes on third-ranked Clemson. And then at 7.20, it's ranked Florida takes on Kentucky, presented by Five Hour Energy. Both games are live on Watch ESPN. Boyd to Watkins. Combination, that's big. They're special. You know, would you say Boyd is one of the front runners for the Heisman Trophy right now? Yeah, it's early, but sure. Right now, you bet. How about Johnny Football? Johnny Manziel he still? He is, absolutely. I, I don't think he's done anything to, nope. you know, to, to hurt least, his cause. He's played not well. on the field, right. <laughs> not, uh, easy, Mark, easy. <laughs> just pointing out the facts. Well, that was just a 22-yard punt, so Howard down eight begins at the 41-yard line of a t McGee. Fires a bullet a little bit behind the intended receiver, Booker. But again, a, a, another pass that was certainly within arm's length of the receiver. Arm's length. And if you're Howard, you still want to have a sense of urgency because there's six minutes to go. You're down by eight, but what if you don't get the two-point conversion? So you want to have that sense of urgency to score as quickly as possible to know exactly how many points you're going to need in order to tie this thing up. He hands it off to Parker. Not much there. Maybe to the 39. And it's set up a third and long, about a third and long eight. And I think you're in four down territory you know, for the rest of this drive here. Especially from this spot, because you're looking well over a 50 yard, any kind of field goal is in. And the clock winding down with over six minutes to go. Play fake. Juggled. The catch made, but where he came down with that Hartman, real close to the marker. It's close because he didn't catch it cleanly, as you alluded to. If he makes a clean catch, that's a first down easily. Instead, he's bobbling the football as he's coming back to the ball. 
Yeah, that's right on it. Take a look, see where he is. You can see the first down marker. And I think from there, he, <laughs> I would say he gained possession ahead of the first down marker, but it was close. Now they say it is a first down. They didn't measure. They just eyeballed it and said first down, Howard. With the clock running, just over five and a half minutes to play. Gonna take off with it. McGee still going down near the 15. I think Jay Walker, you wanted to see more of that tonight from Greg McGee. With the legs, I mean, he can really hurt you running the football there. And at a certain point, you knew when he called his own number, he's very tough to bring down. You can see the athleticism makes a quick decision. And you know, defensive line and the linebackers can't keep up with his foot speed. Gained 16 yards. First down, Howard at the 15 yard line. Hands it off to Parker. He wasn't able to turn that right corner. A minimal gain. William Parker at a half the yard or so. Stopped by Brian Houston. They are stingy defensively. <laughs> the front four for North Carolina A&T, they are around the ball. No they, they just coach well. I don't think I've ever been around a coaching staff that pays so much attention to detail as North Carolina A&T does. Well, that 16-yard run by McGee. Just a couple plays ago, longest. Run of the night for yeah. Howard's <laughs> offense. McGee lost it out of reach at the 10. A lot of heat the looking for Filio out of the backfield. And that's the chess match. AT plays very basic coverage until you get down in their part of the field. They decided Houston, Howard's getting pressure. comfortable back there. Let's bring some pressure. And they brought and Brian Houston, and their linebacker they like to use on their blitz package to put some pressure on Greg McGee. I'm going to get a little ahead of ourselves here, Jay. If they don't pick up a first down here, you're going to take the field goal? I wouldn't. You go for it. Go for it. Regardless of distance. Not the field goal distance, but yep. distance for a first down. Yep, I think so. It's a third and ten. Throwing towards the end zone and way too far for the intended receiver, Tyson. So fourth and ten. And, and the way they looked on that play, then, <laughs> then you maybe, you know, they weren't <laughs> even close. You want some type of yardage, positive yardage. Yeah, you didn't get a real good feel after yeah. that wasn't anywhere close. Yeah. So take the try to take the three points here. And Fleck comes on. He's hit from 26 and 40. And this is from 32 off the right hash. 32 the hold of Richard Iagoro. Had a little trouble getting it down, and it's blocked. Well, special teams tonight on both sides has been big. And a t with the field goal block, it looked like Iagora had a little extra beat of time he needed to try to get the ball down. Yep, he had a little bit of trouble with that snap. It was blocked by Devontae Grant. And it's A&T ball with 415 left. Give me a mobile phone to vote. These thanks very much. Here they hand off the football on the jet sweep to the 32 yard line. A&T trying to get something going offensively, which they really struggled to do in this half, giving it to Desmond Lawrence. And that's what you do. I mean, you put the ball in your playmaker's hands with the game on the line. Four minute offense. They need two first downs to win this football game. Give it to your playmaker, Desmond Lawrence. And he's able to pick up six yards on the run. Now the field goal block, 32 yard attempt of Fleck, who had hit two tonight and was seven for seven in field goal attempts on the year prior to that block. See, right now, they're not going to snap that ball <laughs> until that play clock gets down to five seconds. They're trying to deflate the football. And they hand it off and falling forward is Dominic Drake. <laughs> Howard has two timeouts left. So it's still technically a one score game down eight. Bison. They have to hold A&T here and get the football back and have a shot to try to send this into overtime. Keep in mind the Bison burned a timeout 
may say unnecessarily they've only got two remaining that could become a factor of this game if they're able to get the football back. Kendall watching that play clock it's now down to six. And slipping. Right after the handoff at the 31 yard line. And frustrated Dominic great after that carry. So eight possessions here in the second half for a t leading to their eighth punt of this second half. Two consecutive runs in which it seemed as if there was daylight to run the football and Dominique Drake Whoa. falls down on a slip in the backfield. And he has three timeouts so if they want to take it down. In the last second to call a timeout, they can on fourth down. Stop it with 2.45 to play in this fourth quarter. Well, when we're finished here, the Lexus HBCU postgame report. Howard's mistakes. Uh, special teams, penalties, the turnovers. Special teams have been important on both sides of this game. The second half defense, really on both sides, even though the only team that has scored in this second half is Howard. Uh, you have to also give it to A&T because they've, they've had some stands in this football game. Yep, the, fundamentally sound. And when you've got good defenses out there, guys have to do a little bit extra. And I think those drop balls really, really played a factor in this football game. Well, I've seen a couple of punts blocked, a field goal attempt blocked, and here's a punt for Dominic Frescura. Let's see if Howard comes after this. As Curie gets the punt away. Iagoro lets it bounce, and it takes an a and roll out of bounds at the 26-yard line. So a 42-yard punt for Dominic Frescura with no return, and Howard will take over from there. Give me five, Jay. Power rankings. Everybody wants to know on the bubble, Alabama State. They've lost a couple, but they've got Isaiah Crow where they're special. Number five, Jackson State. They're pretty good. We've seen them. Number four, South Carolina State. Buddy Pugh has got a good one. We're going to see him Saturday. They take on Hampton. Number three, A&T, but that's in jeopardy. <laughs> they need to play some defense. Number two, Tennessee State. And number one, they've been the pride all season long. Bethune-Cookman. First time all season long that my power rankings have not changed from one week to the next. McGee taken off, slides down. He got hit late. And I could understand why Howard wanted a flag there. None comes out. Can I tell you something? This is why you play quarterback right now. The team is on the road. You're down by eight. You need a touchdown. Two minute offense. This is why you play quarterback. not need a pick. And Devontae Graham picks it off have at the 37. Have they signaled interception yet? Yes, they do. Late call. And, and you, you wonder where you're going with this football. Devontae Graham. And the Yankees take over. First and ten. Ah. I don't know if that's an interception. I thought I saw the orange part of the ball touch the ground. Well, if it stands, it's the fourth turnover from Howard in the game and second interception thrown by McGee. And they're going to take a look at this. And this is a huge call. Because if it stands, even though Howard does have a couple of timeouts, there's only 207 left in this football game. And as we always mention that the MIAC conference utilizes instant replay technology. One of the few conferences on the FCS level that do it for all of the televised games. See that look there says he doesn't have it clean. I, I agree. Right there he seems to have it but it's going to move a little bit. You're going to all of a sudden see the laces. And I think that's coming back. Well, is there enough video evidence to overturn the call on the field which is an interception. So is he had it for a moment in the bread basket, but then you definitely see it move towards the ground and it looks like it hits the ground. It's that second 
grip that second cradle I think would be the evidence I would look for to say he didn't have it clean. Now I tell everybody my batting average on this is down getting better this year but I think there's enough there to say that he didn't feel it cleanly it was on the ground. Well if they overturn this it would be a third down play coming from Howard from their own 32 yard line. That's if they overturn this call and give it back to the Bison. The ruling on the field was an interception. But it seems like, Jay, we've seen enough video evidence to overturn this call. Yeah. And, you know, and, there, and there are certain rules that officials look for, like if you leave your feet, you must show the ball right away when you come up. Because he wasn't able to show the ball right away, it means he might have been bobbling the ball, didn't have a good grip on the ball. And you saw the double clutch with the ball up against the grass. Danelle Leathers, our referee, looks like he's about to take the headset off and give us this call. And it's a big one for Howard if they can get this overturned and keep when, their hopes alive. And when they start listening so much, then normally it's just not going to be a simple call like ruling on the field stands. They must be looking at what was the clock, where was the down and distance, what right. yard line. So. Indications are they may reverse this. All right, let's see what the official word is. At the review. I don't do this too. <laughs> it is an incomplete pass. It will be third and four on the 34. Please reset the game clock to two minutes, 12 seconds. So you can hear it through the feedback that it's been overturned. They had some time on the clock, and it's going to be a third down for Howard. And Howard's still alive. Should be a third down and four. And they're on 32. But with the time, even with two timeouts, is, is this even four down territory right now for the Howard? Oh, the rest of the game, clearly. Yeah, I think, you know, and I'm a little bit aggressive with my play calling. But, I, I've but, noticed that, partner. <laughs> but you've got a defense that's been stingy. You don't know how many opportunities you're going to get to cross in this field. Two minutes to go. Got to go for it. So they had five seconds, 2.12 to go. Now they need to move where the ball is placed right now. They've got to where it would be more like third and six. So it's a third and six or it's a third and four. I think the chains are off. The spot is correct, but the chains are not correct. And now they're, now they're adjusting the chains. Drive began at the 26 yard line. So now they've got the chains where they should be. And this is a third down and four. Howard has possession after the interception ball overturned by Review. McGee. Incomplete at midfield. Rodney Tyson, the intended receiver. Fourth down. I don't, you don't need that. You don't need that many yards. You just need four yards. You know, if you don't get four, you need three yards to put yourself in, in fourth and manageable situation there. That's one. Whereas as a quarterback, you've got to have that clock in your head. I wouldn't force the ball downfield, but now. Forget about the vertical pass game. You just got to look for all curls, something short, just to get a first down to keep the drive alive. So fourth down and four. With 2.06 to go. Legoro's the receiver to the left, two to the right. Looking in that direction. McGee dumps it off, and he does not get the first down. Booker made the catch at the 30, and it was immediately hit. He didn't even make it back to the line of scrimmage. He loses a couple of yards, and Oyedaji Olatoya with a huge hit, and they turn it over on downs. It's anti-ball. 
That's been the recipe for North Carolina A&T defense. Keep everything in front of you. Solid open field tackles. They're keeping all the white shirts in front of them and come up, and make a great tackle. Just got the Bison offense. Well, there are a lot of gold jerseys around Iagoro and reaction from Rayford Petty. His team now with just two timeouts. Only 159 left. Hand off. Straight ahead for Tariq Cohen. Stopped by Trey Hogerbook. And they can use their timeouts. They have two remaining. I thought AT was going to snap the ball. I would say you're doing Howard a favor if you snap the ball with 25 seconds on the clock. Now, if they can hold him here and not have a first down, they can at least force a punt by using their timeouts. Stop at the 29 yard line. Now they'll use their first of two. That stops it with a minute 12 left. And if Howard with one more timeout to go, they can get the ball back with some time if they can make a stop. Third down. ESPNU Saturday. Miami and South Florida gets it all underway. A noon Eastern time. And Wake is at third rank. Clemson, Florida. And Lexington to take on Kentucky and Southern Miss and Boise State wraps up our day of coverage at 10:15 Eastern time from out west on the blue turf. We have a minute 12 left here, one timeout remaining for Howard. So if they can hold them here on third down and seven, they can force a punt with some time remaining. And we know how eventful special teams has been on both sides tonight. So it sounds like you're saying this is far from over. I'm well, not about far from over, <laughs> but it's not over. At the 28. And third down and seven. And throw it. Kindle knocked down. Lost the football, but it looked like he was down. <laughs> it was recovered. <laughs> by Damon Gresham Chisholm of Howard, but it definitely looked like Kendall had hit the ground and the ball came out. They need to call a timeout. They do. I don't know what they're waiting for. Unless they're going to wait and try to have one timeout on offense. Well, if they let this run down, now A&T can let this run down to one second, use one of their timeouts. There's going to be about 23 seconds left. If you're Howard, you have to call a timeout. Yeah, you're, you're letting situation. too much clock run out. But you would think, Jay, that you'd want to use your timeout at the high end, stop the clock, instead of letting another 25 seconds run off like they just did. Oh, clearly. I mean, that, that's a situation you would call timeout, and they could have got the ball with a minute left, and then on fourth down, change possession, the clock stops anyway. And I, I understand why a t would call a timeout just to make sure that everything is set, but they they wound down the clock all the way. Now we are seeing on the scoreboard here in the stadium, they're saying that Howard does not have a timeout. Now we have them with one timeout remaining, and as Jay just mentioned, the board shows them with none, but they should have one timeout remaining. Well, fourth down and six, and instead of risking any kind of punt, they can run a play here, and then as Jay mentioned, time would stop on a chain on a change of possession. But here's the pitch to Ricky Lewis. And he's pulled down at the 34, so the clock will stop with 16 and a half Ricky seconds Lewis left. Resby with the tackle, and it's going to be 
Howard Ball with 16 and a half seconds left. They're on 38. So a chance really for only a couple of plays here for Howard. Ball on around 33. And to the best of our knowledge, they still have a timeout left that they have not used. It, it, uh, and if, if they have a timeout left and they didn't utilize it, that's, 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 that's poor clock management. Uh, it says no timeouts for Howard on the board, but they, they have a timeout left. McGee. That's Baldwin. 39-yard line, and unless they use their timeout, I, they they must believe they do not have a timeout remaining because they're not using it. And he spikes it with a second and a half left, so we're going to have one play remaining. Uh, and I say before we become too critical, there must be a reason. So maybe, you know, we're wrong up here. And maybe they were told they don't have any timeouts left. The scoreboard says zero. But, I mean, you have a coach that lets you know how many timeouts you have. So last play coming here for a &T. They need to score and then make a two-point conversion to send this game to overtime. Here's McGee. Scrambling around. What's he going to do with it? And he won't even get a pass off. Looks like his knee was down at the 30, and this game's over. He's still... Chuck's one deep downfield, but he was down, and this one's over. 27-19, NCA and T wins it over Howard. So A and T's off to a three and zero start for the first time since 2001. People wanted to know were the Aggies as good as the non-conference schedule showed. They're off to a pretty good start in MEAC play. So they win their conference opener. In 2013, Atlanta and down Howard. Passes. They've now won five of the last six against Howard. 27-19. The final tonight, and we welcome you to the Lexus HBCU post-game reports here in Greensboro. We're really the second half of this football game, Jay, dominated by the defense. Uh, North Carolina A&T really didn't get anything going offensively. Howard had the only points in the second half. Uh, but the ANT defense really stiffened up when they needed to in this game. And the two teams that are led by defensive coordinators are going to play good defense, and they're going to make the adjustments. And I think in the second half, the defenses took over this football game. And unfortunately, if you're a Howard Bison fan, it was too late. You didn't have the lead. You were playing from the trail position, and ANT sound fundamentally on defense. And it seemed like every time Howard tried to run the football, the ANT defensive line was there. I mean, nobody can run against North Carolina ANT. They only, they average giving up two yards a game to the rush, and tonight. Howard was limited to just two and a half yards per carry. An early punt block. They find the fullback for the first score of the game. And then an interception. Lawrence had a touchdown and then a punt block for Howard. Three Howard turnovers led to 14 A&T points in the football game. And, and the drop balls in there too. They missed opportunities to score when the receivers couldn't hold on to the football. And when you start missing games, uh, the special teams and having KT block the field goal attempts not get off. That's when it got a little bit sloppy. And I think when they go back and look at the film, Howard's going to say, we can compete with North Carolina A&T. We probably should have had a chance to win the football game. You mentioned the drops. McGee's numbers don't look as really as lofty as they could have. But what did you think of the, the two quarterbacks tonight? Uh, I thought Kendall managed a game, and I think McGee is special. I mean, he made some big-time throws there and got no help from his supporting cast with the wide receivers. But I think at the end, I don't know. You've got to find a way. If you want to be a legendary quarterback, you have to find a way to close. And I think in the two-minute drill, he didn't really do a good job operating that. Well, special teams and turnovers were a big part of this game. We take a look at the game summary where North Carolina A&T wins at 27-19. No rushing touchdowns allowed by a and the last 28 quarters. They are stingy when it comes to rush defense, and they do it all season long. Somebody's going to have to break that streak, and I know they take on South Carolina State next week. I'm sure Buddy Pugh's going to try and work on it to the best of his ability. So five turnovers in the game, three of those from the Howard Bison, and they fall on the road as a and wins it tonight. So again, the final score was NC a and 27 and Howard 19. So coming up next, college football weekend kickoff.
So for Jay Walker and our entire ESPNU crew, I'm Mark Neely. Thanks so much for sharing this one with us from Greensboro, North Carolina. Now, let's send it to the studio and good night for the Tar Heel State.